Ah, they've got the Halloween spirit here in Conway, Arkansas, in this afternoon on a spectacular day on the most unique field in all of college football. Missouri Western will open their season against the Central Arkansas Bears with Superwoman on the stands. It's coming up next on ESPN+. Plus. You are watching Southland Conference football on ESPN, and no one does football in the COVID era like UCA, Central Arkansas, seven weeks, seven games of the fourth time this season. They're playing a school, Missouri Western, that's opening the season. And Missouri Western, the big story, they're opening without four defensive coaches. The coaches couldn't make it, and so they had to call Arkansas to fill in. <laughs> Hud Jackson, Dan Augustine, a couple former UCA coaches are filling in today to help out this team. Quite a story and quite an opportunity for those guys. A couple of guys are going to look for from big plays today. Lawan Winningham. Every time he gets a, goes up, it's a chance you're going to get a touchdown. 29 catches this season, nine touchdowns. That's one out of just about every three catches goes for a touchdown. Last week against Eastern Kentucky, nine catches, 103 yards. Oh, yeah, he had a touchdown. And great players come on every level. I'm excited to see Trey Babel. This kid put up monster numbers, the most explosive, dynamic return man in Division II last year. Six foot, 165 pound cornerback, but he gets it done also on special teams. Punt return, he averages 21 yards a punt return. Kick return, 34 yards. Every kickoff return, he is an All-American. Stay tuned. It's the Bears and the Griffins on ESPN. At UCA, you can go big. Go far. Go loud. Proud. Bold. Fast. Forward. Beyond. Go here. The University of Central Arkansas. UCA goes where other universities don't. UCA invests in futures first. UCA builds opportunities best. Our graduates are prepared to go anywhere, everywhere. So when you've got big plans, fearless ambitions, outrageous dreams, UCA says, let's go. Since 1999, Crystal Clear Imaging has been establishing excellence as a signage solution specialist. From building wraps and stadium branding to retail signage and transportation graphics, CCI offers the highest quality printing with competitive pricing and impressive turnaround times. Learn more at www.ccimaging.net. Real print solutions, real big results. We believe that the first step towards positive change is to stand as one. Driven by diversity. We strive to discover truth, mutual understanding, and the common good. We achieve more together than we do apart. Every voice has a power. We are a voice of change. Bettering ourselves and our community. Kindness is effortless. Standing together through adversity. Serving our communities, peers, and teammates. Together we can learn, teach, empower, and promote change. Tragedy cannot bring us down. We are one. Welcome back to Conway, Arkansas. Spectacular campus and unbelievable weather. The third member of our broadcast crew is RJ Hawk on the sideline. And RJ, you may need sunscreen today. Really kind of unseasonable for this time of year. It almost feels like an August day. Uh, right around 75 degrees here on the field. The turf's always a little bit warmer. Guys, it is homecoming here at UCA and it really is a homecoming for both teams because for Missouri Western State, they've got two coaches that used to be on the UCA staff, actually three coaches if you count their head coach, but with you've got Dan Augustine as well as Hud Jackson from UAM who have come in to fill in for some quarantine coaches. They're here for the homecoming game. They're actually coaching for Missouri Western State today. Unbelievable. You only see that in the COVID-19 season and only 
possible because he has those relations having coached at Central Arkansas, Matt Williamson, and he is such good friends with Nathan Brown. They've coached with each other, and they coached against each other because Matt Williamson was at Stephen F. Austin with Coach Clint Conk. And let's face it, this game happened because of Matt Williamson. Yes. UCA is looking for some opponents in this COVID year of trying to schedule, and call up the former defensive coordinator, and he's like, yes, we'll play you. Boy, Willie has done an incredible job at his alma mater. Won six games the first year, nine games the second year, and won a bowl game against Southern Arkansas. And something he did that was amazing to me. How do you recruit 60 new players? Whew. Opportunity to play, I guess. And we're going to see a lot of these young players today on the stripes. And one of the guys we featured just a few minutes ago, we get to see him early. Babel, number 31. UCA won the toss, but they deferred. Now Babel's ready to get the season started with, he's open a big kickoff return. Trey Babel, one of the best in the country at Division II. Let's see if they, yeah, they're going to kick it to Babel. He feels it at the five, and let's see what he can do. Look at Babel go up the sideline. Down to the 40 and cuts inside all the way down to the Bear 32. And I am stunned, stunned that Central Arkansas would play with dynamite on the opening kickoff. I am too, and I wonder if they meant to kick him. Sometimes you tell the kicker, do not kick to Trey. Do not kick to 31. But and what happens? Watch his just pure speed when he gets to the outside. The FBS Bears or FCS Bears were no match for Vavel. He takes it down to the 32-yard line, and sometimes we tell people what to watch out for, and it happens. It kind of made this feel, feel good, right? Now, we told you to watch this kid, and that guy is a player. Some butterflies for Anthony Vespo. He is making his first college start, taking his first snap as a starter right here. As Missouri Western threatens on first down, nice running room. And getting the start and getting the first down, a bit of a surprise up the middle for the first down. It's Jared Scott. Now, in addition to some offensive linemen being out, you hate to see this on the first play. There's a bear down at the 16-yard line. Shamar Griffin's not on the field. He was supposed to be their starting running back, uh, number three, a 5'7 senior from Missouri. Last year, he ran for a 826 yards, an impressive 6.2 yards per carry. He's not here. We have not seen number three on the field. But look at the blocking by the five new offensive linemen, and you hate to see who's down on the field. That's UCA's leading tackler, Dre Matthews, who has been outstanding this season. 43 tackles, five tackles for loss. He's a junior from Florida, and he has been so good for Central Arkansas this season. It appears they're looking at his uh, lower legs right now. It, it seemed like he got rolled up on the play when he was coming in to make a tackle. There were bodies flying everywhere, but you see Matthews. And you uh, don't know if it's COVID-related, but we've seen so many injuries both in NFL and college football this season. Well, and, and you know what? We, we've talked a little bit about Jared Scott getting the start today. He did play 10 games last year. He ran for 307 yards. It was 6.5 yards a carry. It, that's an impressive amount right there. He had four touchdowns last season for them. So it's not like Jared Scott hasn't seen some duty before. He uh, got into 10 games, like I said. So not someone who's looking at his first action even Vespo that we discussed earlier, he appeared in six games last year. So these guys got a taste of what it's like well, to play college football. This is a brand football. new offensive line. Five new starters. In the first snap, they go for 11 yards. Well, the big play over there was two missed tackles for the Bears. They had a chance to make that a much shorter run. But uh, taking no chances give credit right now to the running with, back. Uh, with Dre Matthews. I thought Scott did a great job of shedding some of those tacklers. And you hate to see this. The cart will come out. We're going to take a timeout just underway at First Security Field in Conway, Arkansas. It's the Central Arkansas Bears and the Missouri Western Griffins. We'll be back with much more. Just We hate to see an injury anytime, and especially this early in the game, to a player who's had such an incredible year for Central Arkansas. They're taking no chances right now. They brought out the cart. Uh, I think an air cast was being placed on one of his legs. Uh, Dre Matthews, he's been outstanding as a linebacker for the Central Arkansas Bears, a six foot, 238 pounds, a junior, leads the team with 43 tackles, five tackles for losses. 
and that is a big loss for the Bears here early in this homecoming afternoon. Well, Steve, you can see how much he means to this team. The, the sideline for the Bears is on their knees, just like you see the cheerleaders there, but the entire defensive unit standing about 15 yards away or not standing, they're on their knee, and it's really got them uh, a little bit shook up. Uh, a lot of them have their heads down praying right now, uh, but you can tell that Dre Matthews is a team leader and a very por important piece of this team not only on the field but in the locker room a great care being taken by uh, the uca personnel and the medical personnel on the field and uh, taking no chances with dre matthews and as soon as we can update his injury we will uh, but they're still in the process of uh of trying to get him off the field safely right now and we're just underway first play was actually a surprise of uh, five new starters on the offensive line a tailback who wasn't expected to start, and he runs for 15 yards. And it was just a power play off the right side. Well, and Steve, and to make matters worse uh, for uh, Missouri Western, they have five new offensive linemen, but two of them didn't make the trip down yeah. here because of COVID-related illness. There's Dre Matthews, and uh, head up and uh, being consoled by his teammates as he leaves the field. And uh, that's a ride you hate to see any player take right there see the emotion now and um, how fragile you know your career is you know there's a cast on his left leg right now we don't know what the severity of that injury is but we'll we'll tell you when we do know and now we resume football in the game for uca in his place is tj campbell he's a junior from south haven mississippi wearing number 15 at that inside linebacker spot vespo in the pistol formation and how about this the griffins threatening early in this one we're less than a minute into this one. They're on the Bears 16 yard line. Vespo's gonna keep wide open, slides at the eight yard line. Not known as a, a run first quarterback. He froze the Bears with the fake and then picked up an easy eight yards. Well, you see this uh, run pass option, the RPO. He reads that defensive end. Defensive end comes crashing down, leads uh, a wide open spot. Vespo, he's not afraid to run it. Two plays, 24 yards for the Griffins. Decked out, they're all white. Bears in their Halloween purple. Anthony Vespo, new starting quarterback. This offense averaged 41 points a game a year ago. Second and short is motion. And the handoff trying to get the corner. He will get the corner. Five and oh, just a shoestring tackle, saving a touchdown at the two yard line. That was Cooper Burton from his wide receiver position. It looked like he had the angle to the end zone, but a touchdown saving tackle, the first and goal at the four. No doubt about it. Watch this right here. And actually, this is the player I was just telling you that's in the game because of Dre Matthews. T.J. Campbell comes in, slaps that foot, knocks him down, trips him up, saves the touchdown. He'll spot it at the four. First and goal for the Griffins at the four-yard line. Fourth play of a very effective drive to open the game. Vespo turns, hands to Scott. He is ganged up on at the three yard line. It'll be a gain of only one. Logan Jessup has been so good. 6'3", 275 pounds, a sophomore from Wynn. They are proud of a lot of their defensive linemen, and that's one who's really come on for the Bears. Jessup was lights out at Missouri State a couple of weeks ago in Springfield, Missouri. He had three and a half sacks. He was making life miserable for the Missouri State quarterbacks that night. If you're a Missouri Western fan, you've got to be thrilled with this start. Second and goal at the two-yard line. Five new offensive starters on that line. A backup back, Scott, set behind Vesto in the pistol formation. Scott goes right side, and he is going to be stopped at the one-yard line, tugging Davis Harrison, linebacker from Meridian, Mississippi. Had him by the waist, trying to pull him back, and it's going to be third and goal at the one. That time you saw the UCA defensive line win the battle at the line of scrimmage. There was not a push that time. There was nowhere for the running back to go. UCA Bears defensive line won that down. They need to do it at least once, maybe two more times to keep Missouri Western out of the end zone. Scott, one of many Missouri players. He's from St. Louis on this squad. It's third and goal from the one yard line. Vespo takes a look, pistol formation. Now there's motion across the formation. He'll give it to Scott, goes low. I think he got in. Let's wait for the call. Touchdown, Missouri Western. And look at that celebration. They didn't attempt one pass on that drive. And you go back to the huge return by Trey Vavel that set them up in plus field position. 
Missouri Western comes into the game fired up, Steve. This is their first game of the season. UCA's been playing. They're coming off of a four-game road trip. UCA's been on the road for a month. This is their seventh game. They've been playing for a Actually, their eighth game. They're three and four. They're in the middle of their season. We heard from Nathan Brown earlier this week, and that was one of the things he was concerned with. He said, for a lack of better terms, the sexiness has worn off of the season. We're in the grind of our season. Well, for Missouri Western, this is their first game. They're jacked up. They want to play today. They want to beat an FCS team. They want to show the entire world what they've been doing for the last six weeks. So you saw that right there. When they scored, they're here on our late afternoon. Capcio with the point after is good, and it's 7 0 Griffins over the Bears. Very nice Halloween afternoon crowd on both sides. I'm impressed by the number of people from Missouri Western that made the six and a half hour or seven hour trek to see their Griffins play. Well, it's just what I said. Their fans are excited too. This is their home or their home, their opening game of the season. They couldn't play at home, so you know what? They took the show on the road, and they're making this their home opener. Nice, nice uh, support there from the fans of Missouri West. The Bears are the slowest starting team in college football. They've scored a total of 16 points in the first quarter. Good look at Matt Williamson. Won nine games a year ago. They're fired up in St. Joseph about these Griffins and the job he's done. Well, now a chance for the Bears to respond. I think they see now, it, hey, they got slapped in the face. How do you respond to it when the other team comes in and hits you in the face? We're going to find out. Pop fly kick. Bears hustle to try to secure the football, and they do on the sideline. They'll have it at the 25-yard line. Taking no chances with uh, kicking it deep. A little bit of a bad luck for the Bears. The ball bounced short near the sideline. I think they were hoping it was going to bounce out of bounds, but instead it was a favorable bounce for Missouri Western, and UCA had to just jump on it and run out of bounds. UCA led by the junior quarterback, Braylon Smith. What a great kid, and he's had a tremendous career. 53 career touchdown passes. That's fourth on the list. Uh, 6'3", 210 pounds. They've been slow, slow starters this season. Smith's going to throw on first down. Now he scoots forward, being chased, and oh, what a grab. One hand by Tyler Hudson for a very short gain, but it could have been much, much worse. It was a high throw, and th these are receivers that are going to help the quarterback. Nice grab by Hudson. Yeah, thank goodness Tyler Hudson, six foot two. He used all of his frame. If that ball's not caught, that may be an interception. When you throw it high over the middle and it's not caught, bad things tend to happen. And that time he got bailed out by Tyler Hudson. Smith throwing it across his body. Second down, call it eight for the Bears. Pistol formation. He's got Crossley set behind him. He's going to pitch it back. Flea Thicker. He's got a receiver open. Hudson, he overthrew him at the Missouri Western 25-yard line. What a call by offensive coordinator Ken Collins. Little flea flicker handed it off to Crossley, and he pitched it back to Smith. And Smith had Hudson running free. You underthrow a ball like that, you still get a 40 or 50-yard gain. You know Braylon wants that one back. That's one of those balls you got to put a little bit more air under. If you watch this throw, it's more of a line drive, and it doesn't give his receiver a chance to adjust to it. You got to throw that ball up, let him run underneath it. That's a missed opportunity for the Bears. Third and eight for the Bears, who are trailing 7-0. Smith stands in the pocket. Now gets some happy feet, throws it underneath the Crossley, and look it, Missouri Western rallying to the ball. Evan Shohan with the tackle, and it's advantage Missouri Western. They won the first offensive series, and they come and stuff the Bears, and you talk about rallying to the football right here, the Division II Bears. You talk about that missed opportunity on the deep ball for an offense that's been struggling early in games, if you can hit that play. Well, it's third and long, and I thought Missouri Western did a great job just getting back into coverage, playing his own defense, keeping everything in front of them, and they let the Bears throw it in front of them and then tackle, make the tackle. Saren Hughes Ford is going to kick it to Vable, and what great coverage. Tackle is made at the seven-yard line. Tackle by Robert Rochelle. We'll take a break with the Bears trailing the Griffins 7 0. We believe that the first step towards positive change is to stand as one. Driven by adversity. We strive to discover truth, mutual understanding, and the common good. We achieve more together than we do apart. Every voice has a power. 
We are a voice of change. Bettering ourselves and our community. Kindness is effortless. Standing together through adversity. Serving our communities, peers, and teammates. Together we can learn, teach, empower, and promote change. Tragedy cannot bring us down. We are one. Power isn't born, it's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. In a world where profits come before people, one insurance brokerage is proving you can be different in an industry of sameness. Because we're a generational business, we're blessed to have a long view. With that long view means you can invest in people. Your margins can shrink in the short term, but if you're doing right by your clients and your employees, the numbers and the results will take care of themselves in time. We are one of the fastest growing independent agencies in America. We are IOA. Good shot of uh, UCA sideline, and Nathan Brown has to be concerned early on. His Bears off to a slow start again, trailing the Griffins 7-0. And it's been all Missouri Western early in this one. Ten minutes to play here in the first quarter on the stripes and Conway. Anthony Vespo is going to throw his first pass, little swing pass, caught at the 15, out to the 20. Just there goes the football. And who covered it? Looks like the Bears covered it at the 30-yard line. I think Missouri Western jumped back on it. Yep, oh, they sure wow. did. That's uh, Cooper Burton. Davis Harrison had his hands on the football and couldn't secure it. Watch the replay. Watch 16 in purple here. Has a great opportunity to recover the football right there, but he got outfought for the football. Yep, that's uh, three missed tackles on that play. We've already talked about the missed tackles for the Bears in the first drive. This is a team that starts slow. They're notorious for starting slow, but you have another team on the other sideline that's very excited to play. This is no time to start a game slow. If you start too slow on this team, the next thing you're going to look up, you're down 14, 17, 21 points. One more look and uh, give credit to the Bear on the ground. I believe it was 23, maybe 33 coming up. DeAndre Lamont for stripping the ball. And uh, it's another first down out at the 30-yard line. 9.39 to go in a first quarter. It's been dominated by Missouri Western. Anthony Vespo, a very safe pass. His first year as a starter for Missouri Western. He's going to throw the ball again. Looking for the ball wide open on the sideline. Oh, my. Over the 45, 50. I mean, wide open. Completely fooled the Bears. And it's Cooper Burton running all alone at the UCA 42-yard line. A huge gain of almost 30 yards, 28 yards. I love that play. Cooper Burton was the one who recovered the fumble, so not, why not reward him? Great play action pass here. Bears thinking run. He was in a different zip code. He was in the 870. We're in the 501. 25 yards. There was no one within 25 yards. They spot the ball at the Bear 44-yard line. Vespo to throw again. Little screen pass and a turf tackle there. First negative play for Missouri Western it was Brandon Hall, who's in it running back, making the catch. It will bring up second and 14, a loss of four. Let's see, uh, it's a great break for UCA. Let's see if their defense can take advantage of that now that Missouri Western is going to be behind the chains. This is something the defense needs to take advantage of and stop this drive and keep things from getting worse. We're going to see some new backs. Shamar Griffith, who was scheduled to start and has been a co consistent performer for Missouri Western, is not playing today. Second and 14. Vespo hands off. A little bit of a hole, and he broke a tackle. Then he is stuck. I mean stuck at the 44-yard line. 
That was a shot coming up was Cameron Godfrey, sophomore from Spring, Texas. And he dropped him dead in his tracks, third down and 10. But I know the defensive coordinator is going to talk to his Bears about tackling. That's, that should have been a no game. He was hit at the line of scrimmage, bounced off two tacklers, picked up four yards, and so now it's a manageable third and 10. Paul is a true freshman from Kansas City. How exciting is he? How excited is he? 7 nothing. Missouri Western with the ball in the lead. And Vespo to throw again. Rolling right. Flags are down. Throws it downfield. Nice catch. No, he dropped it at the 28. Should be holding against Missouri Western. That was an obvious hold. You may have heard the crowd in our nap mics. Everyone was yelling hold because everyone on the field could see the hold. And that was one of the back judges that threw that uh, flag. Do you take the penalty there? And holding 76. Offense. A penalty is fine. Down. And it's a much needed defensive stop for the Bears. Well, if they catch this pass, then all of a sudden you have to take that, that call and they'll have fourth and tw or third and 20. But since he dropped it, no need to accept the penalty. You did your job. You forced them to punt. And that drive for Missouri Western kind of fell apart after getting off to a good stop. All because of the turf monster, Steve. It looked like uh, that play, it wasn't going for a long play, but maybe pick up two, three, four yards. And instead of second and six, you're looking at second and 14. So a little bad luck from Missouri Western on their second drive. Our first la look at Jack Rasmussen, who will punt for Missouri Western. Low snap, gets a hold of the football and a beautiful spiraling kick. Fair catch, call, lets it bounce, and look at this. They're going to down it at the one-yard line. Crazy. Ho, oh, oh, oh. ho, uh, We'll take a timeout with Missouri Western leading Central Arkansas at homecoming 7-0. Nathan Brown, the head coach of the UCA Bears, and he's had tremendous success. I think the best player ever to play at UCA as far as college career out of Russellville was the 2008 Southland Conference Player of the Year. He's a Hall of Fame inductee, third season as UCA head coach. They had a remarkable season a year ago. I think they've topped it this year, what they've accomplished with the COVID-19. He's one of those guys that make you feel old when you remember watching and covering him in high school. Boy, Kier Crossley, and uh, give Missouri State credit. Those white jerseys are everywhere. Does burrow out to the two, a gain of only one. It's just tuned in. Missouri Western, the Division II Griffins, have dominated the early play. They lead 7-0, and the Bears, who have scored. Boy, Braylon Smith looking over for, for some something good because they've only scored 16 points this season in the first quarter. That was just a simple handoff straight up the middle, trying to get a little room to operate. The Griffins did a great job. Look at them bunching up. It's going to be tough to run inside. Now there's a timeout by Missouri, called by Missouri Western. Timeout, Missouri Western. Good look at Matt Williamson. Be a 30 second timeout. The dynamic here is uh, Williamson was the defensive coordinator at Central Arkansas when Nathan Brown was the offensive coordinator. So they both, and then when he went to Stephen F. Austin, they coached against each other. So they are great friends. And you know, Matt Williamson, you know when you go up against your good friend, there's nothing more you want to do than beat him. And get those bragging rights. And you know, he's got a lot of friends in Conway. If you didn't hear the opening of the broadcast, he's got two former Bear assistants on his staff today because the four defensive coaches couldn't make the trip. Well, one of those is the defensive coordinator. So Matt Williamson is calling the defense today. So this is something he's very comfortable doing, but now instead of being just a head coach, he's being a head coach and a defensive coordinator. Bears rush back into the onto the field. As a quarterback, you hate operating in the black and white of the Estes Stadium end zone. On second down, it's Crossley again, trying to turn it outside. He's got the corner across the 10, the 15, up the sideline and out of bounds, puts his shoulder down. Finally stepped out of bounds at the 29, and there's a late flag as a bear is tossed out of bounds. And the official threw his hat. I think that's a second flag on a different player, and we're going to have two penalties on Missouri Western. The whistles had blown several times, but yet Missouri Western's defensive player threw the UCA running back down to the ground, and then afterwards there was some more extracurricular things, and I think they're going to get another Missouri Western player for that. Boy, sometimes you need a run like that and a good physical finish to get your offense going. Well, if you notice the play before, Missouri Western, the Griffins were all bunched inside. They were not going to let UCA run it up the middle. And that was the same thing there. They were not going to run up the middle. And so what happens? What does the great Duke back do? Bounces it outside. There's nobody there. Then he uses his speed, and he's able to pick up a 
big chunk of yards. And look at that finish. That sends a message to your teammates. He could have got out of bounds for a 25-yard gain, but he put that shoulder down. Look at Crossley. He invites the contact right here. He wants to be the deliverer of the hit. And that's when he stepped out of bounds and the whistles started blowing. Whistles are blowing now. Yeah. Whistles are blowing. Whistles are blowing. And he throws him to the ground. We have fouls on both teams. Personal foul, 90 white. Personal foul, 43 blue. Those offset. Those are plays first down. Joshua Davis and uh, Garrett Thomas both whistled for fouls. So we'll go back to the 29-yard line. Goes to the gain of 27. That's almost his longest run of the season. His longest run is 37. He's rushed for just under 500 yards. Now the Bears are out of the deep hole. Let's see what the offense can do. Little play fake, deep drop. Braylon looking, throws on the run. Low throw on the sideline. No, they're going to say it hit the ground. You're used to Lawan Winningham coming up with that football and missed an open receiver. It was a tough throw on the run. See the replay here. That's one that he's got to catch. Let, that's one you expect Winningham to catch. You see the ball did rest on the turf. He thought he had the catch. It's going to bring up second and 10. He has the surest hands of the Bear receivers. Sent four receivers in the formation on second and 10. Bears trailing the Griffin 7 0. Smith to throw, has time, sits in the pocket, can't find a receiver, dumps it low. Great coverage, another incomplete pass. They give it to Missouri Western. They come up defensively. That time it was Kobe Cummings, the junior from Platte City, Florida. Look at that, coming over the top. Ball was a little late, too. It's going to bring up third and 10. Yeah, that time uh, Braylon was scanning the field and looking and looking. He was wanting to go to Hudson. Hudson was covered. Probably should have just dumped it out to Perkinson in the right flat, uh, but didn't choose to make that throw. Third down and 10 for the Bears. They need to move the chains. Smith standing in the pocket, heaves it deep, sideline, close coverage. What a grab it! There he goes! Tyler Hudson will walk into the end zone. That's your receiver helping your quarterback. 71 yards, and he did it with style. He made the catch and then just kind of jogged into the end zone. Style points. Tyler Hudson, uh, he plays with a little pizzazz. That's when it pays to have a big, tall, physical, wide receiver. You watch him. It's just a jump ball, a 50-50 ball, but it's not a 50-50 ball with Tyler Hudson. I don't think the coach really enjoys <laughs> that. That's Tyler Hudson. And the defender that time for Missouri Western was DJ Sturgis, an Arkansas kid out of Benton, hey, the, Arkansas. The coverage was there. He just got out athlete. He was. Nice well, throw from Braylon Smith. He threw it high. You know, and DJ's a big corner. He's listed at 6'1", but he's just not big enough to go up with Tyler Hudson. And Tyler Hudson is special. He was the leading receiver for this team as a freshman. He's the leading receiver again this season. He's explosive kick returner. Watch him go up. That is just an incredible play. Then he takes a look at the defender down and uh, just trots to the end zone. He's not interested in his time. It's, it's all about style. He put all the work in when he jumped up and snagged that ball oh, away. But how can that one play from Crossley, you know, get you out of the end zone, get some little momentum, and then you you go one-on-one -on -one and let your, let your playmaker make a play? 99 yards on that drive, right? That's a pretty good drive for this UCA Bears offense. That's the way to respond. But when in doubt, I love what Braylon did there. There were a couple of just questionable throws, poor throws for Braylon. That time, wow. throw it up to your guy. Throw it up to one of your receivers. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Let him make a play. He was covered. He was covered by Sturgis. But you know what? You let him make a play. Give him that chance. And that's what Braylon did. So kudos to Braylon on taking that chance and letting Hudson make a play for him. That is exciting. A 71-yard play. We've had some fireworks early. Saren Hughes Ford will kick off. This one looks like it's headed out of bounds. You hate to see that. Vavil had the big kick return. Trying to check for Hudson. That's, let's see if that's his longest of the year. Hudson, yeah, long, 71. His longest to that point was 50. It's his fifth touchdown of the season. 
Had a career-high 12 receptions against Arkansas State. Arkansas State did everything to take LeJuan Winningham out of that game, but they forgot about Tyler Hudson, and he responded with a huge game. It's hard to take both of them away. You can't take away Hudson and Winningham at the same time. Let's see if Scott's back in the game at tailback. He, did, he wasn't in the last series. He was spectacular on the opening series. We are now tied 7-7. Some early fireworks. Vespo being chased, throws on the run. Cooper Burton has it at the 35 and dances out of bounds at the 38. It's a gain of three. We'll bring up second and seven. Quickly, we're seeing Cooper Burton as their go-to guy. I think that's three catches already for Burton. He had a key fumble recovery for the offense. Cooper Burton is their playmaker on the outside. Hometown guy, 5'10", 180 pounds from St. Joseph, Missouri, a redshirt sophomore. Second down and eight. Vespo in the pistol formation. Looks very comfortable so far as a starter. He's been under a little pressure. 5.36 on the first quarter clock. Griffins and Bears locked in a seven all tie. Gonna let that play clock run down. He's gonna quick fire left. Catch is made by Burt. Nice block outside. And he'll come close to first down yardage. Hey, Kyle Berry. The senior from St. Louis, not a big guy, 6'1", 185. He made that happen because he had to hold his block for a long time, and it allowed Burton to scoot for the first down. And this offense that's replacing so many big pieces has looked pretty good so far. Well, and it's a smart play by the offensive coordinator, right? You got a new offensive line, so let's do a lot of quick passes. And that's what we're seeing for the most part. Get the ball out of the quarterback's hand, not time for the UCA defense to put pressure on him. They have the ball at the 41. There's Scott straight up the middle, gets to the second level. Tackle made by Davis Harrison at the UCA 47-yard line, but that's a gain of seven yards. Huge hole there, opened up by the tackle. The guard doing a great job pushing the, de the defensive end out wide, and that opened up the hole. It wasn't until the linebacker was able to make the tackle, but that was four, four or five yards down the field. I want to point out that Missouri Western is opening its season this afternoon, and the Bears are playing their eighth game. Second down, three yards to go. We're locked in a seven-all tie here late in the first quarter. Anthony Vespo looks right, throws right, ball is tipped and almost picked. Logan Jessup, the sophomore from Wynn, he was kind of disgusted because he thought in his mind that he could tip it and then pick it off. <laughs> he probably wanted to catch it knowing, knowing him, but he tipped it up in the air, and if it would have gone another feet higher, a couple feet higher, you would have seen UCA's All-American corner pick that off and walk it back to the end zone. One of the great high school stories in Arkansas, I know you Missouri folks won't be aware of this, is Wynn. And Wynn is undefeated, and uh, what a great tradition they have over there. Third down and three yards to go at the Bear 47-yard line. Vespo to throw, low, almost picked off, almost picked off. Davis Harrison jumped the route. Oh, he can't believe it. Robert Rochelle grabbing him by the jersey. You had your chance for a pick six. What great anticipation by Harrison jumping the route. Well, we've already recognized they're, they're, they're taking some short throws, and now UCA's defense is realizing that. How about this? Fourth down, they're going to go for it. What do you got to lose, right? Fourth down. Kyle Berry races onto the field at a receiver spot. They're going to empty it's the backfield on fourth and three. Deep set. He may punt. Oh, Vespo's going to punt it. Beautiful punt. It's going to hit about the eight, and it takes a Missouri Western bounce. Hey, the Bears went 97 yards the last time they had the ball, so you never know. They only have to go 93 yards this time, Steve, so it's not that bad. Hey, great, ex great execution by Vespo. Backs up the Bears, and if you're a Griffins fan, you have to be excited by what's happened so far in the first quarter. They look like a legitimate threat to win this game. They have gone toe-to-toe. -to -toe with UCA through the first 11 minutes of this game. It's a dead even game right now. And both times, Missouri Western, or every possession, Missouri Western's had the ball. They've picked up a first down. They've been able to drive. Now it's up to their defense to maintain this tie and get the ball back. Braylon Smith will accept the snap at his two yard line. Hands off straight up the middle. Cameron Myers, second level, just tripped up by Shohan at the first down marker. That had an opportunity to be a big Evan play. Evan uh, Shohan looked like uh, Myers was going to go with the 97-yard dash there. He was 
he gained, he was picking up ahead of speed there. Chohan led the team in tackles last year. He had 94 tackles, and that was a very important tackle there because if he doesn't make that, that's another big play for this UCA offense. Chohan, 6'3", 215 pounds. He's a senior, second and short for the Bears. Myers again slips one tackle and picks up the first down. That was all Cameron Myers. Hey, and give the uh, the wide receiver known for his flash some extra points for grinding, blocking the ball, because old number one, Tyler Hudson, was out in front of that play. Yeah, he can thank him for that first down. It wasn't going to be a first down, but he followed him, got right in behind Hudson, and picked up the two yards for the first down, and another tackle by Evan Shohan there. He had 94 last year and already back-to-back -back plays, too. Bears and Griffins tied at seven. Junior quarterback from Conway, Braylon Smith, directing the attack for the Bears. Backed up on their own 17-yard line. Little option left side. Braylon's going to keep it. He is going to be nicely placed on the turf by Joshua Davis, 6'2", 235 pounds, a redshirt sophomore from Lee Summit, Missouri. They're not very big on the defensive front, but they're very agile. Very nice play right there. And a lot of guys would like to body slam the quarterback. Hey, you don't need to do that. You just lay him down gently. Griffin's played that play exactly perfect. Not only did they have the quarterback, if he had to pitch it out to his running back, there were two players there waiting on the running back. That play was going nowhere. Second and 11, Smith to throw, flags are down. I think this is gonna be against the Bears. Motion, we'll have to wait and see. Free play there for the Bears. It was offsides against uh, Missouri Western. Griffin's jumped offsides and uh, I thought Braylon did a smart thing there. Yeah. You know you have a free play. Took a shot deep. Yep, throw it up to your big guy again and see if he can make a play. Offside, 94, defense, five yard penalty, free play, second down. That time he was trying to connect with Tobias Enlow, a North Little Rock high product. Love this field, the purple, the gray, the purple. If you're an announcer or you're a running back, you can judge your first downs or how many yards you've got very easily. Second down and call it seven yards to go. Smith pulls it up and throws. Enlow makes the catch. He was covered, he has the first down. I mean, that, that Griffin, DJ Sturgis was uh, wearing him like he was an overcoat. Sometimes you have to uh, throw your receiver open and that's what Braylon Smith did that time. Bears are gonna go with a little tempo. Braylon throws sideline, tough throw. Catch is made on the sideline. Perkinson across the 40 to the 43-yard line. That's a first down. There you see the arm of Braylon Smith thrown from right hash to the sideline, and Mitchell Perkinson with the first down catch. Very dangerous throw. That quarterback was uh, thinking about jumping the route, but because Braylon's arm is so strong, he wasn't able to do it, and then he missed the tackle. Under two minutes to play in the half. Smith looks, lots of sideline. Hudson's wide open. Purple, gray, purple, gray, purple into the end zone. Tyler Hudson will call this uh, 56 yards, and there was no one near him. What a first quarter for Tyler Hudson. Love to see the replay on this. I think it's a double move. You see the pump fake from Braylon Smith, the cornerback bid on it, and that means Tyler Hudson is wide open. Those are the hardest balls to catch. Those just easy tosses when you're wide open. Peyton Ray, you talk about an Arkansas powerhouse, Bryant, 25 straight wins. Ray slipped and fell, but the kick is good. And Central Arkansas on two plays, two long touchdown passes, leads 14 to seven. Tyler Hudson having quite an afternoon. Braylon Smith laid it up nicely. And there goes Hudson, just enough speed to get to the end zone. Well, and you remember the missed flea flicker on the first drive for UCA? Yeah. That was to Hudson. If it's a good throw, Hudson's got three long scores today in the first quarter, and he's got one of those games that you dream of having, but I think he'll settle for two touchdown hey, grabs. Give the, give the quarterback credit, too. Braylon Smith with two nice throws. The worst thing you want to do in a situation like that is overthrow your receiver. Well, he learned. He learned. Yeah. On the first one, he overthrew his receiver. That time, he put a little touch on it. And you said, hey, there's nothing wrong with over uh, underthrowing it. And that was a little underthrown. He had to slow down. He, but he caught it. And he was able to restart and run to the end zone. Matt Williams to try to figure out what the heck happened there. And that's got to kill him because they've really if anything, have got the better of the Bears on the line of scrimmage, but on the scoreboard, they trail 14 to seven. 
We're used to seeing slow starts from the UCA Bears. All of a sudden, after a small slow start, now they're fired. Think about this. 16 points all season in the first quarter. They've scored 14 today in the first quarter. Got to get the uh, kickoff going for UCA right now. But they're going to kick it to the All-American. Fable fields it at the goal line. Here comes Fable. This guy is exciting. And down he goes at the 12-yard line. What a nice tackle coming down there to make the tackle was Colson Simpson, a reserve linebacker. And they have elected to play with Dynamite today. They've challenged their kick teams. And so far, it's maybe two to one. Bears. Let's go down to R.J. Hark on the UCA sideline. Hey, guys, real quick. Dre Matthews, who left the game earlier in the first quarter, he's being taken to Conway Regional Medical Center with a knee injury. They did use the air cast to support the leg, but he has a knee injury. Oh, you hate to hear that. Thank you, R.J. Vespo leads the offense out. They're backed up at their own 13-yard line. Another new back in the game. Low snap, and Vespo's in trouble, and down he goes. Snap blew that play up right there, honestly. Marquez Casey, great penetration. Sophomore from Jacksonville made great penetration, and it's a loss of two back to the 10-yard line. Two weeks ago, I, I was at the Missouri State UCA game, and Missouri State was having problems with their centers. They went through two different centers because of snaps just like that. When you have a low snap, it just throws off the entire play. Quarterback was trying to read the defensive line before handing it off. He had no chance. Neither one of them had a chance. Shen Butler lost it in the game at tailback. Vespo has motion. Hands the motion ran. Cooper Burton and the Bears are all over him. Loss of three. And that was TJ Campbell. TJ in the game because of Dre Matthews' injury. And you see Campbell making two plays already since coming into the game. He just did a fantastic job of chasing that down. The offensive lineman never got a hand on him. He ran right past the offensive lineman and made the tackle in the backfield. This drive is going backwards after two plays for Missouri Western. Third and long, the first down sticks out at the 23-yard line. Vespo has been confined to throwing short passes. Drops, screens it right, and Scott for the turf tackle, down he goes, and Missouri Western will be forced to punt the football. And you know who the punt returner is for the Bears? Hudson, <laughs> watch out. I think you're starting to see the speed yeah. of UCA's defense cause some problems for Missouri Western. Those two plays, you saw offensive linemen down there trying to make blocks, but they couldn't get to the defenders of UCA because of UCA's speed. Yeah. Oh, we'll take a timeout with the Bears leading 14 to seven after one quarter here at Conway. Sitting a putt out of his own end zone on the E with the Bears spelled across the end zone. Tyler Hudson back deep. He already has two long touchdowns. Very high spiraling kick. Hudson got interfered with and there goes the flag. Didn't allow him room to make the catch. Very high punt. T.J. Flinna, I don't think he was aware of the uh, short kick and bumped into Hudson as he was preparing to catch the football. Too, I see that was a very good punt. It was uh, uh, probably four, five, four, six, eight time. Interference number 81, kicking team. That's a 15-yard penalty. Wow. First down. A big penalty. And the punt went 42 yards in the air. I mean, as a special teams coach, that's what you want, a high punt that travels 40-plus yards in the air and does not allow Tyler Hudson to return it. But then you have the mistake of running into the returner 15 yards. Just tuned in. Hudson in the first quarter had touchdown catches of 56 and 71 yards. Bears going left to right on the turf here in the – Second quarter, great defensive play coming up to make the stop. Take a look at the last drive for the Bears. Braylon Smith, Tobias Enlo moved the chains. What a nice pass to the sideline to Perkinson. That was a tough throw. And then he went big ball. Tyler Hudson with his second touchdown catch. That was his short one, only 56 yards. On second and 10, Braylon rolling, throwing on the run, Perkinson. He dances out of bounds, short gain of only three. 
Braylon's numbers right now, he's 7 of 10 for 158 yards. How about Tyler Hudson's first quarter? Three catches, 130 yards, two touchdowns. Most people will take that for a game. He's uh, what's that? What's that? A pace of 520? Is that right? Crazy. Is my quick math. Yes. Like, yeah. <laughs> Eight touchdowns, 520 yards, 12 catches. Third down and call it six. Bears on the fringe area for field goal at the 32-yard line. Smith straight back to throw. Has time, heaving it deep. Tight coverage out there. Catch is made. It's Lawan Whittingham. A little of his magic. Hey, Tyler Hudson got two. He did it in winning hand style. You could not see his number. Defender was all over him. It was actually good coverage. And it was just Winningham making a play. He created separation. Another DJ Sturgis said the kid from Benton had good coverage again. Boy, the receivers are showing out this afternoon. Yeah, if I'm Braylon Smith, I'm throwing it up to those guys anytime they have one-on-one -on -one coverage, and we're seeing a lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage, man-to-man -man from Missouri Western. And I'm betting my two stud wide receivers are going to beat your cornerbacks no matter how good they are. Ah, uh, Winningham scores. Bears 21, Griffin 7. We'll be back with much more. Just a You can go big, go far, go loud, proud, bold, fast, forward, beyond. Go here, the University of Central Arkansas. UCA goes where other universities don't. UCA invests in futures first. UCA builds opportunities best. Our graduates are prepared to go anywhere, everywhere. So when you've got big plans, fearless ambitions, outrageous dreams, UCA says, let's go. isn't born, it's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. We believe that the first step towards positive change is to stand as one. Driven by adversity. We strive to discover truth, mutual understanding, and the common good. We achieve more together than we do apart. Every voice has a power. We are a voice of change. Bettering ourselves and our community. Kindness is effortless. Standing together through adversity. Serving our communities, peers, and teammates. Together we can learn, teach, empower, and promote change. Tragedy cannot bring us down. We are one. Oh, a spectacular Halloween afternoon, and on the stripes, it was early on, it was all Missouri Western. They went up 7-0, shocking the Bears, but it's been all Central Arkansas since then. Three long touchdown passes, and Matt Williamson finds himself in a hole right now, trailing 21-7. I love the way UCA res has responded. The Griffins came out, punched them in the face. It was 7-0. The Griffins were fired up. That sideline was going crazy. The Bears looked a little dead and shocked. Since then, 21 straight points, and they are playing good football right now. you got to feel when Vabel throws his surrender hand up, that that's a victory for you. It's a great kick, honestly. It was a sky kick. He caught the it Bears around are the, talking to him here too. the 12, 13-yard <laughs> line. And uh, they, that, the kicker prevented him, because of that hang time, from having much of a return. So he threw up the hand and called for the fair catch. Smart play. I want to remind you who Missouri Western is playing without. Four defensive coaches. Their number one tailback, Shamar Griffith, who was a late scratch, who's had a terrific career at Missouri Western. And he was going to be the feature, he's going to be the featured back this year. Had 800 yards rushing last year and not, not here today. 
Scott will try to get the edge. There goes the ball. Bears have it up the sideline and going into the end zone for the touchdown is Logan Jessup. He got his touchdown. Ball popped right in the air, room service. And he is the big play defensive lineman from Wynn. 6'3", 275 pounds. is nothing like a big guy touchdown. And look at this hit. Bam. Boom. Helmet on the ball. Pops in the air. Jessup, He's Johnny on the look. spot. One more look. Oh, great hit coming up. Oh, man. Tamari and Wilson from Bryant. Remember him as a Bryant Hornet. And uh, I know Buck James, his high school coach, is proud of him there because he set up that touchdown. True freshman out of Bryant comes in. Perfect form tackle, helmet on the ball. Ball comes loose. Touchdown, Bears. You talk about four huge plays already. Four huge plays. Three long touchdown passes, then this defensive touchdown. And all of a sudden, Central Arkansas is out to a 28-7 lead. Rewind that tape to about 45 minutes ago after the Griffins scored their touchdown. The stands over there were going crazy. The fans were going nuts. The sideline was jumping up and down, and now it's dead over there. Momentum all on this hey, side. Hey, I have a hard time uh, faulting Scott because that was just a perfect hit from Wilson, and uh, Jessup looking like a running back. He wanted a touchdown. You saw him gazing over his shoulder. They, they teach you just to go. You don't look behind. Was he looking especially, at the big screen? No, he was looking behind him. <laughs> He's 275 pounds, so he knows the guys chasing him are much lighter. <laughs> oh, he's so exciting when a defensive lineman gets a score touchdown. Something he will always remember. He'll be telling this story 20 years from now on Halloween night to his kids saying, back in 2020 on Halloween night, I scored a touchdown. I bet you this goes at Fable, it's high. He's going to return it. There'll be no fair catch this time. And here he goes at the 10. And down he goes, snap, at the 17-yard line. The Bears are having some fun right now. They've taken a chance. It's a personal challenge. Well, Colson Simpson, you called his name earlier. He was there again, 54 on the tackle. Had a little help that time from Stephen McKay. Mackey Jr., he was there, teamed up, double team, put him on. The ground. Well, Nathan Brown challenges Bears was early on because they kicked the Babel on the opening kickoff. And it was a big return. That's what set up their touchdown. Short field for them, and they took advantage. Griffins need to respond. They're trailing now 28 to 7. One thing they haven't had offensively is the big play. Now flag is down. Play a game, number 11. Wow. Offense, five yard penalty. Last Three, thing. They needed at this point was a delay of game and put it behind the sticks. Well, and you just said it, Steve. They haven't had a lot of big plays. They've had a lot of full three, four, five, six yard plays. And that's what they're going to have to do just chip away, chip away at first and 15. Vespo out of the pistol formation. He's going to hand right side. They've got the corner. Nice run out of bounds at the 34 yard line. A nice gain. We've seen the Bears. By Brandon Hall do the same exact thing. It looks like they're going inside, bounce it outside. The Bears defense lost the containment on the outside, and he was able to get to the sideline and pick up about, what, nine yards on the play. Well, they're going to spot him out of bounds. They only gave him a four-yard game at the 24-yard line. Oh, he picked up nine yards at the penalty. Now another flag down. Usually when they come before the play, it's against the offense, so that would be uh, – <laughs> The left guard jumped, but he's saying there was a bear in the neutral zone. The, the bear defender jumped, but I couldn't tell if he was in the neutral zone or not. The Griffins are clapping, so I'm going to say it's going to be offsides on the Bears. Neutral zone infraction, number 90, the defense. He was in the neutral zone, causing the offense to jump. Five-yard penalty. Achavius Brown. Correction. The results in a first down. Will be a first down for Missouri Western. Ball out at the 28-yard line, 28 to seven. Bears lead the Griffins as we play early in the second quarter. Vespo out of the pistol formation. Hasn't really thrown the ball downfield yet. They have run the ball pretty successfully. Throws a dart over the middle, incomplete. 
was looking for Devin Holmes, and it will bring up uh, second and ten. Bears had pretty good coverage there. It was a tight window for Vespo to throw into, just a little off target. Safety was coming over to make the hit if he did, in fact, catch it, but unable to connect with his wide receiver. Holmes had 49 catches last season. He was the leading receiver last year, and he's back again this year. He's been quiet so far this afternoon. Second down and 10 for Missouri Western. Vespo to throw again, pressure's coming, throws sidelines, got a receiver, big hit on the sideline. It's a gain of about seven. Good shot from Cameron Godfrey. And that was Holmes on the catch, and it will bring up third down and three. Nice throw by Vespo. Yep, Vespo uh, missed his receiver that time. Devin, Kyle Berry made Yeah, Devin Holmes was open about 10 yards further in the field. He had sat down in the zone and was wide open. I thought that's where he was throwing it. That would have been a first down and some, but instead he uh, settles for the, the shorter throw, an easier throw, and now it sets up third and manageable. That was Berry from St. Louis. Fake to Cooper Burton, little screen pass, catches made by Hall. Tackled right at the first down stick. Looks like it's going to be a first down. Tackle made by Nick Nakwasa. A little hesitation move right there from yeah. Hall gets the first down. He appeared to be a little short if UCA makes the initial tackle, but the hesitation and the explosion afterwards picks up the first down. Nice response from Missouri Western here. First and 10 at the 39-yard line. Hall is in at tailback. They played three tailbacks. They're without their number one tailback, Shamar Griffith, second leading rusher a year ago, not playing this afternoon. First and 10 from the 39-yard line. It's Hall, and he is driven back by Campbell and thrown to the turf. I don't think anyone blocked T.J. Campbell. Read the, read the play, jumped across the line, and made the tackle. Look at the Bears' defense this time. There are three defenders there to make the tackle. A lot of purple and not room to run. You don't want to see 15 and 16 in your backfield. Second down and 11. Bears have put 28 quick on the board, 28 to 7. Central Arkansas leading Missouri Western. Vespo being chased by Jessup and down he goes. Boy, Logan Jessup is having a game. Scored a touchdown on interception, batted down a ball, and now he made a sack. And the smile on his face says it all. He just whipped the lineman and came to the quarterback, Vespo, and tossed him down. I love how Jessup was under control when he got to the quarterback. A lot of times you're not able to make that tackle when the quarterback spins yes. out of the way, but Jessup had his feet and weight distributed and was able to put his arms and hands on that quarterback and spin him to the ground. They're testing my math here, third and 22. Thank goodness for the folks in the truck. Third down and 22, and they will cover it. We will take a timeout with the Bears leading 28 to seven here in the second quarter. After fourth down, we're going okay. to take. We're going okay. to see how the punt goes. I was jumping to the timeout. Well, they got a long way to go. Tyler Hudson back on the field. Rasmussen to punt. Bears 28. This is a team that's been a slow starter this, so far this season. How good will Nathan Brown feel at halftime to see those at least 28 points on the board? Well, this is a team that is used to fighting back in the third and fourth quarter. It would be nice for once if they didn't have to stress out and have to claw back for a victory. Rasmussen back at his 10-yard line. Good snap, kick is away. Nice looking punt, fair catch, called and made by Hudson at the 36-yard line. Now we'll take a timeout. Bears 28, Griffin 7. We'll be back with much more from First Security Field in Conway. Nathan Brown and his mask. I'm trying to look for Nathan's son in the crowd because coach said he'd be in a, his John Cena get up. He's a big wrestling fan. He said, Dad, no purple on Halloween. I'm wearing my <laughs> Cena gear to the game. It is Halloween, and a lot of kids are getting ready to go trick-or-treating if they're able to. On first down, Braylon to the sideline. Catch is made and out of bounds. It's Winningham. It's a gain of nine, and Braylon Smith is off to a terrific start today. He's 9 of 12 for almost 200 yards, completing 72% of his passes. More importantly, is three touchdown passes. One to that man right there, Winningham. Second and short for the Bears. 
straight up the middle, and it looks to be enough for the first down. Notice a little change with this Griffin's defense. All of a sudden, out of the cornerback spot, DJ Sturgis is out of the game, and guess who's at cornerback? A guy that we've been featuring on kick returns and punt returns. Well, there'll be some talking out there with Vavel at quarterback. So Vavel is out on Winningham right now. We'll see how this one-on-one -on -one matchup goes. Big Cameron Myers had that first down carry. Bears at their 45-yard line, 46, leading 28 to seven. Here comes the rush, screen left side, catch is made, nice grab. The big guy showing soft hands. I mean, he scooped that off just before it hit the turf, plucked it, and and picked up eight yards. Well, the pressure for the Griffins couldn't stop this from being a really big play. The Bears had this set up. There was hardly anybody over there. If that throws a little bit higher, he takes it, and he's able to pick up 10, 15, 20 yards. Second and two. Smith with the clap. Myers left side, and there he goes. Across the 35 and tripped up by Vavel at the 31, or he could have been gone, and now Vavel is on his back. And you hate to see that on the sideline. I think Babel landed a little funny, maybe on his shoulder when he came down. He uh, made the tackle, was able to get him out of bounds. But one check, more look. Check how uh, Babel falls on this play. Went low, might have caught a foot in the helmet. Mm. Yep, you see that head kind of pop up yeah. like that. I think you're exactly right, Steve. Uh, well, if you're, you're attacking a guy like Myers, who's 230 pounds, you go for his ankles if you're Vavel. you got to go for the legs. There's a shot of Trey Vavel. What a special young man. I'm, we'll, take, we'll take a timeout while they attend to Vavel. Bears 28, Griffin 7. We'll be back with much more from Conway. We believe it's the first step towards positive change is to stand as one. Driven by adversity. We strive to discover truth, mutual understanding, and the common good. We achieve more together than we do apart. Every voice has a power. We are a voice of change. Bettering ourselves and our community. Kindness is effortless. Standing together through adversity. Serving our communities, peers, and teammates. Together we can learn, teach, empower, and promote change. Tragedy cannot bring us down. We are one. Since 1999, Crystal Clear Imaging has been establishing excellence as a signage solution specialist. From building wraps and stadium branding to retail signage and transportation graphics, CCI offers the highest quality printing with competitive pricing and impressive turnaround times. Learn more at www.ccimaging.net. Real print solutions, real big results. In a world where profits come before people, one insurance brokerage is proving you can be different in an industry of sameness. Because we're a generational business, we're blessed to have a long view. With that long view means you can invest in people. Your margins can shrink in the short term, but if you're doing right by your clients and your employees, the numbers and the results will take care of themselves in time. We are one of the fastest growing independent agencies in America. We are IOA. Oh, you hate to see this. That's Trey Babel, and he is uh, obviously distraught. We don't know what is wrong with him, but his day may be done. He is one of the most dynamic players, and you see the tears. Uh, that's a competitor right there. We saw how special he was on the opening kickoff, and um, I would guess his, his day may be done. Yeah, the way he, uh, he is distraught over there. He looked up in the stands for his family. There's Myers. What a nice play in the backfield. They are still balling over there. That was Terrence March, linebacker from Sacramento, California. They find these players from everywhere. Tell you what, he fired through that hole, didn't he? He saw the play developing, shot through the gap, and made the tackle in the backfield. Great play from March. This is a season opening game for Missouri Western, a Division II team. And I've seen a lot of good things on both sides of the ball, considering who they're missing today and how they perform. 
they've been out-athleted at, at certain spots. Well, Nathan Brown knew how good this team was. They went to a bowl game last year, knocked off Henderson State, a team in the state of Arkansas that Arkansas coaches have a lot of respect for. It's Myers again. Boy, big 99. That's Chris Blakeney, 6'3", 315 pounds. Well, it's hard to move a guy that's 350 pounds, and you saw right there they could not move him, and he stuffed up that play, and it had nowhere to go. He's from Concord, North Carolina. It's third down and 10. Let's go down to R.J. Hawk on the sideline. Hey, guys, over on the Missouri Western sideline, Trey Babel is undergoing the concussion protocol right now, as you guys talked about, uh, did take a uh, leg or a foot to the head, and so uh, his day is done as he's going into the concussion protocol. All right, thank you, R.J., and hate to see that. Props to R.J. for making it all the way across to the Missouri Western sideline. I think you nailed it on the on the replay when that head snapped back. I think yeah. uh, the foot of uh, uh, the runner caught him on his chin, and his head snapped back, and it, it did not look good on the replay. And, yeah, he's uh, taking his see. gloves off now, and uh, that's a competitor right there. I mean, he is a... Uh, his stats, incredible. When you average 20 yards of punt return every time you touch the ball on a punt. You know, coaches will take 10 yards on a punt yeah. return. They said that's one first down that you just got for our offense. Well, he's getting twice that yeah. on every punt return, averaging 20-plus yards on a punt return. And on a kickoff return, he's averaging 30 yards on the kickoff returns. And that's why he was an All-American last season. Yeah, his face still in his hands, and uh, you hate to see that. And we've seen way too many injuries early in this game. Dre Matthews, uh, our thoughts are with him. He appears to have a knee injury. He's at Conway Regional being looked at. Third down and 10 for the Bears, who lead 28-7. to Braylon Smith has been on fire here in the first half. Smith straight back, looking, little screen pass, catch is made by Myers, tried to hurdle a man, and up, and down he goes. And beating his chest is Devin Burrell with the tackle. Picked up about five yards on the play. So Tyler Hudson saying you almost made it. Fourth and five now, Steve. You're on your 27-yard line. Look at this, line. look at this. Oh, and down he goes. Look at, look at Tyler Hudson to his left saying, oh, that hurt. Could have been bad. Luckily, he was able to tuck it and do an entire flip and not land on his head. All right, here comes Hayden Ray, the Bryant product. This will be a 45-yard field goal attempt. Well, two weeks ago, I was in Springfield, Missouri, and watched him put on a show kicking the ball. Now, a lot of times on his 40-yard-plus kicks, it was with the wind, not here. You called it. No win, and he still had enough leg. 45-yard field goal makes it. Nice job by Hayden Ray, and he is pumped. He makes it 31 to seven with 5:51 to play in the first half. You know, any type of win we may have, it may have been a little bit in his face. Let's take a timeout with the Bears celebrating a 31 to seven lead. Welcome back to Essen Stadium and Conway. 31 sevens our score and. The guys just got done talking about Hayden Ray right now. And, you know, he had a really cool goal but at the beginning of the year is to make every single field goal. But he was really upset because last year he finished one field goal shy of the record, which was 16 for a single season here at UCA. It would be interesting to see what he can do the rest of the year. Well, that was a great kick right there. There's Hayden Ray, the product of Bryant. A football factory. He is a junior enjoying his time at Central Arkansas, and he's pumped. A couple of weeks ago on the coaches show, Hayden said he would like to be, you know, the goal would be the all-time career field goal leader at UCA. And Coach Brown said, you know, I really don't like him kicking field goals. I want him kicking extra points. And so they got a good laugh out of him. And he said, yeah, I really want to kick a bunch of extra points. Well, field, field goal means we didn't score the touchdown. He's 12 for 16 this season. He's 6 of 8 from 45 to 49. First and 10, Vespo to throw, and the flags are down. Yeah, I think the offensive line got a little bit of a jump on the snap that time. It just did not look right when the ball was snapped. 544 to play in the first half. We've had a lot of whistles. Nothing you expect ball that. Start, yeah. 71, offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. For UCA, it's their eighth game of the season. But for the yeah. Griffins, this is it. This is their first game. And so they're still trying to get into the flow of things. And so there have been a couple of plays that things have looked a little off for them. Years ago, you know, they started naming the numbers of the offensive linemen. I still don't know if that's a great thing for the offensive linemen. <laughs> 
the only time you really get singled out. First and 15 back at the 20. And that play was blown up in the backfield. Take your pick. I'm going to pick 97. Caden Brown, 6'1", yeah. 302-pound junior from Dardanelle. Marquez Casey was with him, too, a 250-pound sophomore. Brown's ready for Halloween right now. Look at that face paint. He, he looks scary. He's, he's got the nose yes. under the eyes, the cheeks. He is ready for Halloween. This defense has played well here in the first half. 31-7, to seven, five minutes to go to the half. Bears in control against the Division II Griffins. Second down and 20. The hand to Scott trying to turn it inside, and the Bears are there. And down low, making the tackle for UCA. They're getting a lot of folks in there. Colson Simpson. Yeah, we've seen him twice on kickoff returns, and now we see him making the tackle for the defense. I'm going to have to put the two deep chart up and go to the overall roster because now they're starting to get some players in there that aren't listed on their two deep. And Missouri Western, a team that can't afford to get behind the chains, and now it's third down and 17. Probably see something a little conservative here. Maybe another one of those little quick screens they like to run. Vespo out of the pistol. Bears come with four men, and here they come. Jessup is chasing him. They're checking it's Brown, throws sideline incomplete. Was Caden Brown chasing the quarterback? Well, if he makes a good throw there, that's a first down. The yeah. Bears defender had kind of bailed on the play and was running downfield, and all of a sudden the Griffins receiver stopped, turned, and had a chance to pick up the first down. But, you know, the quarterback's running for his life right there, and it's hard to make an accurate throw when you're running. How about Caden Brown? Little little loop there, and he's on the chase. I don't think he's going to run down anybody. <laughs> It's first, fourth down, I should say, and Rasmussen back at his three-yard line. He's done a pretty good job not allowing Tyler Hudson to return the football. Good high kicks, and uh, Hudson hasn't been able to do anything with these punts. Bears set up a, that's a beauty. Fair catch called and made at the UCA 41-yard line. It's nice having a guy back there with short hands like Hudson. Four minutes to play in the first half. Bears in control up 31 to seven. And Tyler Hudson, you've been the man with those purple gloves. Touchdown catches of 56 and 71 yards. And LaJuan Winningham also with the touchdown catch. And Logan Jessup with a fumble return for a touchdown. And sometimes I think it's good to have your wide receiver back there on that punt return. He doesn't feel like he has to make a play there because you know what? He's about to play wide receiver and he can make a play there. So you don't have to force anything as a punt returner. Crossley gets the call on first down, bounces it outside, and watch out! Cross midfield. Little stutter step still on his feet all the way down to the 40-yard line. Gain of almost 20 yards, depends on the spot. Nice run by Kier Crossley. Great move at the end to pick up about five more yards. It looked like he was going to be tackled, but nice little juke. And Look at the job by 79, very nice. And then he, he gets some yards by himself, and Winningham backing off didn't want to get the holding call. Bears threatening at the 40-yard line. It's Crossley again, down to the 36. Nice job by those white-clad Bears rallying to the football. And it will bring up second down and six. Clock moves to 327 to play in the first half. It's been all UCA. You see the scoreboard, 31 to seven. Bears picking up the tempo a little bit. Second down and six. Smith out of the pistol going to throw it short. Catch is made by the fullback across the 30 to the 28-yard line. It'll be enough for the first down for the Bears to move the chains as they try to finish off this half with another drive that ends up in points. Austin Eldridge, one of the many tight ends, coming up with the catch for UCA, and it will bring up a first down for the Bears. Under three minutes to play at the 28-yard line. Crossley, right side, needs a block, runs out of a tackle, runs out of two tackles, down to the 21, an eight-yard gain. And this Missouri Western defense might be getting a little tired. They've been on the field a lot in the second quarter. Yeah, very powerful run that time, and he finished it off just as strong. Picked up eight yards on, on the play. Clock down to 226 to play here in the first half. See a good look at Braylon Smith, junior from Conway. He's looking deep, man-to-man -man coverage. Winningham did it again. Pow! 
Grab on! There was some fighting with the hands, and you know who's going to win that? LaJuan Winningham, and that is his. They're going to give him the touchdown. No, they're going to spot it right inside the one-yard line. Well, that time, the Griffins defensive back, D.J. Sturgis, no, was complaining that, that he pushed off. We'll get a good look here. Like you said, a lot of hand fighting going on. It is a touchdown for yeah. LaJuan Winningham, his second touchdown. Does any receiver in the country make more contested catches? He got the final shove, a lot of hand fighting. I think uh, Sturgis and uh, the Griffins have a reason to be a little upset there. That, that was a uh, lot of hand fighting and a good push. That is four touchdown passes for Nathan Brown and two heavily contested catches for LaJuan Winningham. Yep. If you're a receiver, why not take the chance? Uh, there was hand fighting both ways. Yeah. He did get the last push, though. Well, you got to gauge the officials, right? If they're going to let you play, one more look you play. Here. Yeah. The last push came from Winningham, but there were some other pushes in there. But you know, you're, he, you got a big, strong wide receiver. He's going to him. He's going to be the most physical guy. And he's telling you, Braylon's telling him, "I'm going to throw to you. I'm going to throw to you. You just, you just get out there one on one. You get the ball." I kept wondering if that's going to change from the Griffins. Uh, just to only, me, that's hard to go one on one with the these two big receivers. The only problem is these masks. You can't tell if the guys are smiling. And give, give credit to these folks in the stands, masking up. Here's Braylon Smith. How about this? A four touchdown first half for Braylon. What a good dude. Raised by his granddad, lost his mom early in life. Uh, the, an unusual hobby for a college quarterback, rodeo guy. Yeah. And you won't find a nicer young man than Braylon Smith. Uh, I, I had a chance to hear him speak to Fellowship of Christian Athletes, gave his testimony, and he is just a, a, a kid you root for for Central Arkansas. He's a roper. He, he, yeah. he throws that rope, can rope the calves, jump off that horse, tie it up. He's a dual, he's a dual threat star, right? If you're Nathan Brown, you're looking at that scoreboard, you're saying, is that us up 38-7 to seven in the first half? Nice move by Brandon Hall. Then he is stuck. Coming over to make the play for Central Arkansas was Nicholas Gonzalez, redshirt freshman from uh, Catholic High. There goes Hall trotting off the field. What a disappointing end to this half. For, it, it started so well for Missouri Western. Well, that's you know, it's been a lot of one-on-one -on -one plays. I mean, by the wide receivers. They made four plays for touchdowns. That's the key here for the uh, Griffins. They, they need to, to end the half on a positive note. It starts with getting a first down. Let's just get a first down here and see what can happen. That was Shen Lawson. Shen Butler Lawson, a freshman, 195 pounds from Waynesville, Missouri. I tell you, Vespo does a good job carrying out his fakes. I wasn't sure there who had the football. Second down and nine. Clock down to 138 to play in the first half. It's been all Central Arkansas, as you can see by the scoreboard. Still strange when you look at their record, three and four, and you see Missouri Western, this is their first game. Second down and nine yards to go. They need a big play. And knifing to make the tackle. This play's Unblocked. going to come back. Yeah, two guys in motion. That play just didn't uh, Colson look right. Simpson in on the tackle again. I think the Bears would decline. It's going to be third down and long. Shift, number 10 and number 5 on offense. Both were in motion and did not get set. That probably declined. Third down. Third down and long for Missouri Western. Good luck at Cooper Burton, who uh, early in the game, I was impressed with Burton, made some plays, and he's someone you may look to here on third and long. He was definitely their go-to guy early in the game. You remember back on their first drive, they had a short field. Second drive, they moved the ball. They were able to get some things going with Burton early in the game, but since then, it seems like they've always been behind the chains. There's been a play that just sets them back. Maybe it's a penalty. Maybe it's a, a low snap. We've seen some problems with the snap back to the quarterback, but they've had some issues since those first two drives of the game. They're going to call a timeout. Timeout, Missouri Western. 51 seconds to play in the half. Good look at the uh, white-clad Griffins and their head coach, Matt Williamson. Not the kind of first half he anticipated. 38-7 is Griffins trailing the Bears. 
I think I saw a stat with Missouri Western, incredibly, has won 11 straight road games. I saw that. They haven't lost on the road in two, since 2018. Is that incredible? That is. R.J. Hawk on the sideline. Let's go down to R.J. at about the 23-yard line. A good look at that defense. R.J., they've stepped it up a notch. They really have. And really after last week's game with Eastern Kentucky, Coach Williams was not happy that they gave up that last touchdown to lose the game. In fact, that really stuck with them all week, and they made an emphasis to work on the last two-minute drill of, of a ball game to defend the, the long pass and even a backup quarterback situation. Third down and nine. Clock at 51 seconds to play here in the second quarter. Vespo to throw, has time, throws underneath, incomplete. Went off the hands of Cooper Burton, would have been shy of the first down. I think Cooper had a hard time seeing that ball. He was looking right back into the sun. The sun is starting to set. At that time, the quarterback zipped one in there to him, and I don't know if he ever saw it. His reaction was very late when the ball almost hit him in the face mask, and then it went past him and almost ended up in the hands of another Griffin's offensive player. But very tough conditions that time, looking back into the sun as the quarterback tried to get the first down. Rasmussen to punt for the fifth time, and he's done a nice job for Missouri Western. Snap is back, and here come the Bears. Kick is away, another high kick. Hudson calls a fair catch and makes the catch at the 42-yard line. Steve, with 39 seconds here in the half, what do you think Nathan Brown does? Do you think he just runs out the uh, clock with them up 38 to seven, or uh, do you think he tries to score some points here? You know, you're always thinking, I think, down the line, and you, and you have further games in the season where you might try to see what you can do in 39 seconds and then motor down in the second half if you were to score here. Good teaching moment, possibly. Yeah. Let's pretend, guys, that the we need to score. The only thing about these masks, you can't tell anything. It's like a poker game if you wear masks. You can, can you read a guy's eyes? You know, you know, you know there's a smile underneath that mask. Let's see what they decide to do. Looks like they're gonna hand it off. No nope, play fake. They got a one-on-one -on -one out here. They throw sideline. Winningham fell down, and he's thrown out turf. It was a tough pass uh, on the run on the sideline. Only took five seconds, so it'll bring up second and ten. It might be setting up a up and out and and down the field move. Well, that time the defensive back had a huge cushion on Winningham. He was he was wide open, but when he made the cut, he slipped, and that threw off the, the timing just, of the play. You just don't see any safety help here, which uh, on one-on-one -on -one situations is dangerous. Now you're not seeing much of a cushion. No, on second and ten. Smith to throw. Yep, he made it move deep. He's tightly covered, and it's overthrown. Very good coverage. And for the most part, they've had great coverage on the receivers. That was Sam Webb. Sam Webb's a good story. Uh, they have the Cliff Harris Award. This is a kid that's up for it. NFL teams have been looking at him, and I think the Bears have basically been thrown away from him today. I don't think we've called his name at all today. A big, today. big physical guy, and he stayed right with Winningham that time. 6'2", 195 pounds, a 6'2 corner. You know the NFL loves those tall cornerbacks. But if you notice, they've basically gone to the other side with their receivers. Third down and 10 for the Bears. Might run it here. Handoff left side. Griffin's rally to the tackle before the first down marker with 20 seconds to play in the first half. So the Bears took a couple of shots to see if maybe they could move the chains, get something going in the last 38 seconds. Nothing going, so they just run out the clock. and looks like we'll go to the half with the Bears winning by 31. Clock will run down. What a half for the Central Arkansas Bears, full of big plays. And on homecoming, uh, they get a nice hand from their Bear crowd. Braylon Smith with his helmet up. What a good first half for the Conway native. Bears 38, Missouri Western seven. That was the highlight of the first half. Logan Jessup, young man from Wynn. How about the homecoming crowd enjoying a 38-7 UCA lead? There's Jessup again. He's everywhere. And Lawan Winningham, just so many touchdowns. 38-7 Bears. It's halftime at Estes Stadium. Thirty-eight to seven is our score here in Conway. 
as the UCA Bears, they lead Missouri Western State on the stripes on Halloween night. Tell everyone welcome back to ESPN Plus as the Bears are rolling today. When you look at Braylon Smith, you look at Lawan Winningham, Tyler Hudson, they're having a day as well as the Bear defense having a good day. And uh, it's just been a lot of fun so far here on homecoming and on the UCA campus. Well, coming up on November the 25th, the basketball season is getting ready to get going. And the Purple and Gray Network's Kier Jenkins, she has more on what to expect out of Bear basketball. Wednesday, November 25th, the day college basketball returns. For first year head coach Anthony Boone, this is an opportunity that was not guaranteed for the Bears until a few months ago. We've been in doubt for several months now, uh, not knowing what was gonna happen. And uh, even, even with it being delayed, um, I'm super excited that we're getting to practice full time and get ready to play actual games here pretty soon. We had a complete schedule, and then we didn't know when the season was gonna start and uh, then things, uh, things changed and we had to scramble for more games and we had to scramble some more and scramble some more. And actually, you know, our schedule changed a number of times. Uh, to now finally have a complete schedule, we're, we're very happy that that's done and uh, really looking forward to whoever it is we play. Central Arkansas will start the season in a multi-team event starting on November 25th against Old Miss and finishing out Thanksgiving break with matchups against Arkansas State and Jackson State in Oxford, Mississippi. Well, I, I would imagine that first game, um, there's, there's no telling how our guys will come out because they've been raring to go. As, as, as we said, um, you know, things have been uncertain for several months. And when they went home for spring break, we didn't know that they weren't going to come back until, until late summer. And no workouts, no basketball at all. Um, we're going to be like, as most people will be, like caged animals, just ready to go. Um, and it'll be a challenge for our guys, three, three games in three days. It's going to be very similar to how our conference tournament is, and that's how we're going to frame it for them. we got to get ready. If we want to win a championship and have a chance to play in an NCAA tournament, we're going to have to do something like that. So this will be a good chance for us to get accustomed to, to quick scouts, um, you know, getting all the details we can in a short amount of time and uh, mentally getting ready to play a game after playing one the night before. The highlight of the non-conference schedule for any basketball fan will be December 12th as UCA travels to Fayetteville, Arkansas to face the Razorbacks for the first time since February 1st, 1947. Well, I, I think um, with any two teams out of Arkansas playing each other, it's, it's a big deal because it's basketball, it's in the state of Arkansas and people are excited about it. Uh, certainly with us getting a chance to play the Razorbacks who have been a great program for years and years and years and for us it's a great opportunity to go up and as we do with a lot of games we play in the, the non-conference we play against power five teams it's a chance to compete against a really good really good program with a really good coach and really good players but we hope that um, the competition we play in the non-conference will will give us uh, one some chances to, to build some confidence when we are playing well and then some um, opportunities for us to reflect on what we can do better in spots where we don't play as well. So um, we've got some great teams in the conference. We think that are probably as good or almost as good as the number of the Power Five teams we're going to play. So we think it will get us ready for uh, you know, the, the really good teams in our conference. You know, there's, there's Stephen F. Austin, of course, who's always really good, and Sam Houston, and Abilene Christian's been really good, and, and, and really all of our teams from top to bottom. Are, are very tough and very competitive, and anyone can beat anybody. So just give us a mindset of always having to bring it whenever we get on the floor. Thank you, Kier Jenkins. It's 38 to seven here on the Stripes in Conway as the Bears, they lead Missouri Western State at the half on homecoming right here on ESPN3. Back here on the Stripes in Conway, Arkansas, 38 to seven. Central Arkansas leads Missouri Western State. And joining me now on the field is Dr. Brad Teague, the athletic director here at Central Arkansas. And uh, Dr. Teague, you gotta be happy after the, the road warriors that are the Bears to be here at home on homecoming, 38 to seven. RJ, it feels great to be home, and what a beautiful day. And uh, UCA does homecoming really well, and it's always a, a big crowd and a big excitement. 
a lot of school spirit, and so it's fun to be up 30, 38 to 7 right now. You know what's really interesting? In the times that we live right now with COVID-19, you guys are at 25% capacity at the stadium, but it with the fans that are in the home stands and, and even the visiting side, it feels like there's a really big crowd here right now. Well, you know, you have to spread out, so it makes the crowd look larger than it really is. And so we're spread throughout the stadium. The sound is, is, is great. We have a beautiful field and a beautiful place, beautiful campus, so it's always fun to have our home crowd here. And you're right, we, we have played a lot on the road. This is our eighth game of the year. No one else in the country has played eight games, but only our second home game. So that's tough. You know what's crazy, Dan? We, we were talking about this earlier. UCA has been the season opener for four teams this year. And really, you know, a lot of teams go, well, UCA has been on the road. They've been playing for eight games. This is our first game to see. I think that's what we saw out of Missouri Western early was they were a little bit more fresh than the Bears. No doubt about it, RJ. And, and, and also, we, don't, we didn't have any film on them yeah. for this year. Had to look at last year's film, but personnel's different. Didn't have their, their depth chart until the middle of the week. So we didn't know a lot about what they were going to do. And that was obvious, you know, the first couple of series. But looks like we figured it out and playing a lot better on defense. One thing that is really unique about this season is that you've played home and home with Missouri State, getting ready to do home and home with Eastern Kentucky. You've already been up to Eastern Kentucky once. They're coming here uh, in two weeks. Well, we're, we're at a great part of the schedule now because we, we're in our eighth of ten games. We've got a week off next week, and then, yes, Eastern Kentucky comes in here who beat us on a last-second play, so it's going to be fun to get them here on the stripes. Dr. Tig, thanks for the time, and uh, let's hope for a great second half. Thanks, RJ. That is Dr. Brad Tig, the athletic director here at Central Arkansas. It's 38-7. to Central Arkansas leads Missouri State on ESPN3. And welcome back to Conway, campus of Central Arkansas University. It's halftime, and it's been all Nathan Brown's Bears as they lead 38-7 to in a first half that was big play after big play for the Bears. But early on, how about the Griffins? They score first after a big kick return from Trey Babel. Jared Scott gets in for a yard out. They were fired up, Westmore. Tell you what. It was looking a little scary for the uh, Bears on Halloween, but then they exploded That's 38 scary straight That's Missouri points. Western. <laughs> Tyler Hudson just coasting in the end zone. 71-yard scoring play, and then minutes later, it's Hudson again. Must be a little up-and-go move, and he goes in for 56 yards. It was just big, big play, and you know if Hudson scores, who's not going to be far behind him? Winningham's well, going to score in a minute, but, but this is Logan Jessup. Logan Jessup, young man from Wynn, had a... Uh, Fumble return for a touchdown, also blocked a pass and had a sack. Now here's Winningham, two very physical touchdown catches. Wow, he was special in the first half. 38 to seven, Bears lead. We're getting ready for the second half here in Conway. You're listening, you're watching on ESPN and we'll be back with more, it's 38 to seven Bears. And there is no place like home if you're a Central Arkansas Bear. If you look at the first half stats, it pretty much uh, indicates why it's 38 to seven. Bears, you have to be happy with those rushing yards. 101, Keir Crossley, very effective in the first half with 69 yards. And Nathan, I mean, uh, Braylon Smith with 231 yards. And you mentioned the Bears have more rushing yards than Missouri Western has total yards. 101 to 89. You, we've talked a lot about Tyler Hudson, Lawan Winningham, those two have combined for six catches, 191 yards, and four touchdowns. That's a pretty good ratio, right? Six catches, four touchdowns. I think Nathan Brown will take that. I thought Logan Jessup was huge in the first half. Tipped the ball, had a sack, and then uh, had a fumble recovery for a touchdown. And Colson Simpson leading the team in tackles with five tackles, a couple coming on special teams. We got to hear from his dad at Yeah, halftime. very proud dad. He's a red shirt freshman from Fountain Lake, and he's loving life as a a Central Arkansas Bear. Braylon Smith, little teaching moment there. The head coach, uh, Nathan Brown gets an A for mask wearing because I can hardly recognize him in the mask, which coach he is. You have your roster out. I think we're going to see a lot of different players in the second half. Kick fielded at the five, across the 10, the 15, 20, watch out, 30, 35, and out of bounds at the 40 yard line. A good kick return to start the second half by Cameron Myers. That was exciting. Myers showing a little burst there. Myers wanted to get some more kickoff return opportunities, and he takes it out to the 42-yard line. So good field position for this offense. 
Braylon Smith, 13 of 18 for 231 yards and four scores. Was not sacked in the first half. I see Braylon Smith out there, Hudson, Winningham. You wonder how long they continue to play here in the second half, but they're going to start the third quarter. Myers is the tailback, and Smith will throw on first down. Dumps it over the middle. Catch is made by Perkinson, and he gets to the 45-yard line. Undercut there. Nice tackle made, and it will bring up second down. Tristan Davis up from his cornerback spot. Second down and seven for the Bears. Tyler Hudson was streaking down the middle of the field, wanting to go deep, but that time the Griffins had a safety uh, looking at him and the cornerback staying deep. They weren't going to let Tyler Hudson go deep. Braylon Smith under center this time on second down and seven. Little play fake, thinking big ball, got a receiver wide open, catch is made, big hit, wow, 20, 17 yard line. What a play. Sam Camargo. 6'3", 260 pounds, senior from Kissimmee, Florida. Was he a load to bring down in the open field? He saw Look the safety him. coming oh. and he put the safety on the ground. He's motivated by uh, Young Brown's uh, wrestling costume there, Nathan Brown's son. That was a wrestling move. How about that? What a fun play there. Sam Kamarja. Bears threatening again at the 17 yard line. Oh, he's looking for Hudson, and Hudson didn't have his, did must have turned to the football. It must have been miscommunication there between him and, uh, yeah, he's looking at, he's very demonstrative with all his actions, Tyler Hudson. He's not happy there. Yeah, he told him he didn't hear him. He he, uh, he was doing a totally different play. He was actually blocking D.J. Sturgis, thinking it was a run play, and the ball almost hit him in the back. What a beautiful homecoming day here in Conway. Second down and 10. You see the score. Bears did a lot of damage in that first half, 38-7. to seven. Smith out of the shotgun. Claps to the football. Little shovel pass to Myers. 15-10. Puts his head down, and... He's down at the 10-yard line. They'll spot him. It'll bring up a third down and three for the Bears. First drive of the second half, 38-7. to seven. Very well executed. A lot of open area for Myers who kind of slipped on the turf. On third down, it's Myers straight up the middle. Move those sticks. It's another first down at the four-yard line. I love the Bears. way Myers runs the ball. Yeah, very north-south. He sees it, he goes. There's no dancing around. There's no trying to bounce it outside. He sees where he wants to go, puts his head down, and hits it as fast as he can. Big guy, 6'1", 205 pounds, a sophomore. He's rushed for about 250 yards this season. One touchdown. Cameron Myers, pretty much been him and Crossley handling the football today. Been a good running day for the Bears. First and goal at the five yard line. Bears tried to add to the 38 to seven lead. Myers, give M Missouri Western credit. Those Griffins are still fighting. Brandon Johnson down to the bottom of that pile. That's not a big defensive front either. They were tugging at the ball, trying to pull it loose, doing everything they can to stop this drive. That time, ran into a wall. The Griffins did a good job of stopping that play. Second goal in goal from the four yard line. Griffins of Missouri Western. Very small defensive line. I think they average about 245 pounds a man. It may be all right for division two, but it's uh, very small in this game against that Bears offensive front. Look up at the top of the field and you got that matchup of Webb and Winningham. One, one on one right there. Second and goal from the four. Smith is looking that way, throws flat, wide open. Did he get in? Yes. Touchdown, Austin Eldridge. And it's another touchdown pass for Braylon Smith. Braylon Smith with five touchdown passes. Tell you what, Steve, he had several options here. Winningham was wide open. He ran a rub route. He had another receiver going to the back corner of the end zone that was wide open. Look at Winningham, wide open in the middle. This receiver is open towards the back of the end zone. Plenty of options that time for Braylon Smith. 44 to seven. 
RJ's going to have to cycle. RJ Hawk's going to cycle through the records. And uh, what was, I think I remember uh, Nathan Brown throwing maybe seven touchdown passes. All right, celebrating another Bear touchdown. It's 45 to 7, Central Arkansas. We'll be back with more in just a minute. You can go big, go far, go loud, proud, bold, fast, forward, beyond. Go here, the University of Central Arkansas. UCA goes where other universities don't. UCA invests in futures first. UCA builds opportunities best. Our graduates are prepared to go anywhere, everywhere. So when you've got big plans, fearless ambitions, outrageous dreams, UCA says, let's go. We believe that the first step towards positive change is to stand as one. Driven by adversity. We strive to discover truth, mutual understanding, and the common good. We achieve more together than we do apart. Every voice has a power. We are a voice of change. Bettering ourselves and our community. Kindness is effortless. Standing together through adversity. Serving our communities, peers, and teammates. Together we can learn, teach, empower, and promote change. Tragedy cannot bring us down. We are one. isn't born, it's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Wes Moore is cycling through the records there. Braylon Smith now with five touchdown passes, and it's 45 to 7, Central Arkansas. And we believe that's probably it for Braylon Smith. A little fist bump with Luke Hales, the backup quarterback, and I think we're going to see Hales on the next uh, series. Yeah, Luke Hales is on the sideline now, throwing the ball around, and several of his teammates came up to him and gave him a fist bump, like, now it's your turn. Go in, show him what you can do. Missouri Western ready to get it. Hands back on the football. Use Ford Sarah with the kick. Fielded by Hall at the nine. Races across. Oh, hit his own man. Hit his own man at the 18 yard line. Leandre Rocks did a great job of blowing up that play and yeah. blowing up the defender, and the defender ran it, <laughs> made the tackle. Let's go down to RJ on the. Bears sideline. Guys, Austin Eldridge, who uh, just caught the touchdown pass for the Bears. That was his first career touchdown pass. It's only his fifth career catch of his all of, of his season. Really, he's kind of been a, an emergency tight end after the Bears went through four tight ends this year. And now he's he's really made the most of it here late in the season. Vespo out of the pistol formation. Sliding catch made out at the 30-yard line. That's going to be a first down. Actually, probably, you know, their longest completion downfield in this game. Catch is made by Talik Jackson, freshman tight end from Guthrie, Oklahoma. Best both threw that a little behind Jackson, but if it's on target, that had a chance to be a really big play because UCA had let him slip out into the secondary and nobody was around him. Griffin's first possession of the second half. Vespo to throw again. Throws underneath. Catch is made. Big tight end rumbling to the 45-yard line. That's Cam Grandy, and he was one of their leading returning yeah, six receivers. 6'5", 235-pound sophomore. Four games with a touchdown catch last season. Going fast. Another quick toss. It's Burton out near the first down marker, and a flag is down at midfield. I think they may have been trying to go too fast. A little tempo, and it caught him. Good look at Cooper Burton. 
He's had a nice game, Missouri Western. Oh, and if you're Missouri Western, you just can't afford to get behind the sticks and penalty. Yeah. Number 72, offense, five yard penalty, replay first down. New offensive line. Burton was their leading receiver for the game. He uh, had three catches for 37 yards in the first half. He had that long catch of 26 yards. That's been their best play so far uh, in the game besides the kickoff return to open the game. First down and 15. It's been all pass on this drive. Going to throw again. Vespo sideline. Catch is made cross midfield. Nice throw and catch. They've got something going. That was Travion James. Redshirt freshman from Joe T. Robinson. The senator right down the road in uh, West Little Rock. That has to feel good. You know he's got family members here. Four Arkansans on this team that made the trip down here. And so that's why you probably do see a uh, a little of that Missouri Western crowd over there. They didn't have too far to drive from Benton or Joe T. Robinson, P. Ridge, Bologna. Been a long time since Missouri Western has been in Bear territory. Deep drop, fires over the middle, complete. In Bear territory at the 35. That was a dart. Catch is made by Kyle Berry. Nice work by Vespo. He was under pressure, too. I was about to say, give credit to Vespo. He stepped into that throw and delivered a strong throw with the defender barreling down on top of him. First and 10 at the Bear 35-yard line. Missouri Western trailing 45-7, to but not giving up here. First time we've seen them go tempo. They've been successful. Pistol formation. Bears showing four-man rush, and Vespo to throw again. Looks right, looks left, hits a man across the middle inside the 20 to the 19 yard line. It's Cooper Burton and it's another first down. Boy, Vespo looks like a new quarterback on this series. The patience from Vespo. That time he had time to throw and he stood in the pocket, look, 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 finally found Burton streaking across the middle for the first down. The red zone at the 17 yard line. Vespo making his first start. I think he's played pretty well this afternoon. He looks poised, and when given time to throw, he has delivered. First and 10 at the 17-yard line. The handoff, and Jessup is there again. Logan Jessup is having a huge game. That was Shen Butler Lawson. Steve, I was going to say the biggest difference in this drive than in previous drives, the UCA defense has been right on top of Vespo, not giving him time to throw, give credit to his offensive line for buying him some time yeah. and allowing him to throw. Second down, approaching the eight-minute mark of the third quarter. Shade now covering most of uh, the red zone for Missouri Western. Vespo is going to throw, pressure's coming, lobs it low and incomplete. Marquez Casey was chasing him, caused the underthrow. If you look, if he can step into this throw, he's got the, the receiver coming. open. He just couldn't put anything on it because he had a defender. Yeah, Davis down. Harrison, it was actually Davis Harrison chasing him. Bring up third down and 11. 8-17 to play here in the third quarter. They're working in the direction of the UCA band, which fills the area behind the end zone. Third down, Vespo to throw, standing in the pocket, pressure's coming, spins out of it, still going, staggering, and finally caught from behind at the 15-yard line by Logan Jessup. <laughs> Logan Jessup is everywhere. I think he saves the first down here. If Jessup doesn't chase him down, I think they get the first down. Let's try a field goal. Want to get some points, some, something positive on the board. It'll be about a 33-yard field goal attempt from the left hash. Not much wind at all. Kick is away. Boy, he yes. nailed that one. Roland Tyson hits the field goal to make it 45 to 10. He races off the field after successfully executing a field goal. We'll be back with much more from the Stripes and Conway. Bears lead 45 to 10. Hey, what a nice drive by Missouri Western. Nine plays, 65 yards, ends in a field goal. And uh, Vespo looked to be really in a zone when they speeded up the offense. It was 45 to seven, Missouri. 
Uh, it was against the UCA scored. first oh, defense. Yeah. They hadn't, no, they were still their guys out there. They hadn't really accomplished anything since the first quarter, but yet they came out the third quarter after meeting at halftime as an offensive unit and marched down the field, had some nice plays, and get a field goal out of it. Kicks in the air, and it's going to be fielded at the 5 across the 15, shaking a tackle at the 20, 25. Good work there by Miles Kit Denton, freshman wide receiver from Merlin, Texas. Getting his hands on the football, 45 to 10, UCA in control, and a new quarterback, Luke Hales. He's already done some good work in a backup role at Central Arkansas. He comes from a winning pedigree, Greenwood. 6'2", big guy, 225, can throw it and run it. Very capable backup quarterback. Luke got to play a lot last season, year before. He's a, a junior from Greenwood, as you mentioned, and Greenwood produces a lot of quality quarterbacks, and he comes out passing. Throws it to Tyler Hudson. Up the sideline he goes to the 36-yard line. Good, confident guy. When you get him out of Greenwood, they have produced so many great quarterbacks. Well, and I love the fact that Nathan Brown, while he's putting in his backup quarterback, he's not putting in his backup wide receivers. I think it's important for Hales to work a little bit with Winningham, to, to, to work a little bit with Tyler Hudson, because you never know what might happen down the road these last couple of games. And so you want him to have some experience throwing with the first team wide receivers. And you know if you played for Greenwood High School, you won state championships. Handoff up the middle to the... 37-yard line and close to another first down. Starting to see the Bears go to the bench a little. Marshawn Douglas, redshirt freshman from Memphis, getting some time at tailback. Third down and very short, pistol formation. Douglas again, stutter step, churning those feet, and I think he's going to be stopped right at the first down marker. It's going to depend on the, st on the spot right here. One of the officials running in, I thought was going to give it, but the official on the near side, our side, it, I don't think he got it. Yep, he's short about a, yeah. a foot. Douglas trotting off now. I think the Bears are going to punt the football. There is a great friendship between the two coaches here. I mean, uh, Nathan, Nathan Brown not only respects Matt Williamson as a coach, he likes him. And uh, and there's no reason when you're up 45 to 10 to try to go for a fourth down when you're in the middle of the field and create any kind of bad blood on a day like this. Miss Trey Vavel back returning kicks. If you missed it, uh, he was injured early in the game. Hall is back. Searing Ford with the kick. Beautiful, well, high, it's short. And yeah, that ball bounced off someone. I couldn't yeah, tell who it was. was. There was a bunch of guys running. And so I don't know if the Griffins do either, so they just fell on it to yeah. make sure. Uh, we'll take a timeout with Central Arkansas leading 45-10. to 10. We believe that the first step towards positive change is to stand as one. Driven by adversity. We strive to discover truth, mutual understanding, and the common good. We achieve more together than we do apart. Every voice has a power. We are a voice of change. Bettering ourselves and our community. Kindness is effortless. Standing together through adversity. Serving our communities, peers, and teammates. Together we can learn, teach, empower, and promote change. Tragedy cannot bring us down. We are one. Since 1999, Crystal Clear Imaging has been establishing excellence as a signage solution specialist. From building wraps and stadium branding to retail signage and transportation graphics, CCI offers the highest quality printing with competitive pricing and impressive turnaround times. Learn more at www.ccimaging.net. Real print solutions, real big results. In a world where profits come before people, one insurance brokerage is proving you can be different in an industry of sameness. Because we're a generational business, we're blessed to have a long view. With that long view means you can invest in people. Your margins can shrink in the short term, but if you're doing right by your clients and your employees, the numbers and the results will take care of themselves in time. We are one of the fastest growing independent agencies in America. We are IOA.
His fans hanging in there. Hard to believe this is week eight, and it's only the second home game for Central Arkansas. And you forget about the cheerleaders, too. They are uh, all masked up, uh, socially distanced. Uh, it's great to see the band all lined up in the end zone. Everyone is getting a chance in this COVID time and still safely be able to contribute to the atmosphere. And a perfect Halloween afternoon for football. We caught a break with the weather. Now that the sun's starting to go down, Starting to get a little chill. It's going to get chilly tonight when it gets dark. Boy, T.J. Campbell's had a nice game. Unfortunately, he's in the game because uh, Dre Matthews, leading tackler, and our fingers are crossed that uh, a good prognosis is coming on him. He was injured early in the game. Nice play by just a physical play by Campbell. That was Hall on the carry. Second down. Give to Hall again. Bounced back, and Jessup is chasing him. Breaks two tackles. Great effort by Hall just to escape the Bears and get to the sideline. He'll bring up third and long. It's one of those plays with UCA swarming to the ball. You start counting. How many guys do they have playing yeah, defense? Yeah, like they're playing with 12 or 13. It doesn't, didn't seem fair, but they were all over the field, just kept stringing it out, stringing it out. Good job from the Bears' defense. Third down and long. They have some big guys in that defensive front. Javian Brown just came off the field. He's 6'2", 320 pounds. Vespo, very effective on the last drive. Let's see if he can convert this. It's third down and 12. 4.32 to play in the third quarter. You see the score, 45 to 10 Bears. Vespo straight back, setting up the screen. Catch is made at the 25, 30, and he's going to be shy of the first down. Well-executed play, but the Bears were able to rally to the football. Once again, the speed of the UCA Bears defense came into play there. It looked like the Griffins had plenty of blockers out yeah, there, but now the Jared blockers, Scott is shaking up. The blockers just could not get on, latched on to any of the Bears to put put a block on them. You hate to see this, uh, Scott, who is uh, their number one back, appears to have injured his ankle, and their number one back, already out of the game, did not play today. Shamar Griffith. Good look at the stripes here in Conway. Beautiful facility. Done major upgrades. Their video board is out today, but I, I can, it's probably suffering from the fact they haven't been able to use it for so long. This is their first home game in over a month. Very creative scheduling by Brad Teague, the athletic director. He was able to schedule 10 games. Unfortunately, most of those were road games. Many FCS schools are playing not playing. None. Yeah. And uh, for Brad Teague and these Bears to pull off the schedule that they did, 10 games, it's quite the achievement. And I know nationally they've been getting a, a lot of respect for what they've the, been able to do. You see the video board, it looks almost bigger when it's blank. <laughs> it may have been from all the points they put up there in the first, <laughs> second, third yeah. quarters. And how good was that for our Central Arkansas, a team that's had trouble scoring early in games to get 38 points at halftime? They came out after that first, you know, five minutes of the game. The Griffins had all the momentum. It was seven to nothing. I, you know, we spoke with Nathan Brown earlier this week, and he told us flat out he was worried about his team. You did not yeah. want to think of playing a Division two team. You did not want to think of uh, you, you, this was an easy cupcake homecoming game. He wanted his team to be excited to play on the stripes because he knew the Griffins were going to come in excited to play with this being their first game, with them playing up and playing an FCS team. He was worried about the attitude of his team. And I tell you what, Steve, after watching the first couple minutes of this yeah. game, I was worried too. I, it looked like his team was sleepwalking a little bit. But Look maybe that. that goes back to the play. Hurt his off. right ankle, and he's hopping the last 20 yards. He didn't want any assistance. His head coach was out there to see him. And uh, that's probably all we'll see from Jared Scott this afternoon. I go back to that flea flicker. I almost think, feel like Nathan Brown and the offensive coordinator, they were trying to put a little life in this team, create a little excitement. Sometimes when your team's down, what do you do? you got to create that excitement. you got to get them, get that momentum going. Well, it ended up his big playmakers got that momentum going and the excitement going for the team. Rasmussen's been a busy young man this afternoon. We're going to back off. Line drive punt. Hudson's going to field it at the 30. Backtracking, trying to get outside, back to the 25, and now he'll dance out of bounds. And the Bears will take over at their own 26-yard line. 3.36 to play in the third quarter. It's been all Central Arkansas this afternoon on Halloween. I know you have daughters of maybe that Halloween age. They dress it up tonight? 
They are. They're excited that we're going to have a haunted trail down the creek by our house. We've got it all decorated and some spooky characters. So we're going to socially distance and let two or three at a time go through the trail and just try to scare them really well. It's going to be a great Halloween. Waiting for that blue moon to start rising up. Should be a beautiful night. All right, Hales back, Luke Hales running the offense, and it's Douglas with the carry, breaks a few tackles, and he's gonna be ridden down at the 32-yard line. Love the way he kept his feet moving. Good, tough running, hit several times, but kept churning those feet and those legs forward. Was able to pick up about six yards on the play. Isaac Wallace on the tackle for Missouri Western. Second down and three. Good look at Luke Hales. Product of Greenwood's outstanding program. Hales, little shovel pass to Douglas. Races across the 35 to the 36, just shy of the first down. Looks like he got right around the 37, maybe just short of the 37 where they mark it. He needs to get a little beyond the 37, so I think it's third about two. He showed two a little feet. burst there. Third down, they'll give it to Douglas again, hitting the backfield. Now he's not going to get it. Give Missouri Western credit. That's two straight third and shorts that they've stopped the Bears on. They're going to send the punt team back out there. So the Bears, instead of going for it on fourth and short, and we'll, we'll see Sarah use Ford. I know Coach Brown is really happy with the, with the job he's done. He's back at the 20 yard line. Bears in control. 201 to play in the third quarter. Here comes the pressure. They went after him. Kick is away. It's going to hit and take a, a kind of a neutral bounce. And the Bears are going to down it at the 32 yard line. We had a good shot of Luke Hales on the sideline getting after his uh, offensive teammates. He's not satisfied. You know what, Luke is getting a chance to play. He wants to move the ball. He wants to show what he can do as the quarterback of this team. He was trying to get his uh, offensive linemen and his teammates motivated so maybe they can pick up a first down to do a little bit more on their next drive. Vespo is a redshirt sophomore from Bolingbrook, Illinois. He's 6'3", 215 pounds. Done a nice job running the Missouri Western offense today against a tough Bear defense. Pistol formation on first down. He's going to throw, looking sideline, has a man at the 36-yard line. Quick, it's, easy throw right there. I thought that was a good play call, and then picks up positive yards on first down. Cam Grandy, the 235-pound sophomore, with the catch. Second down and seven. Inside two minutes to play in the third quarter. Vespo looked to be changing the play, now looks to the sideline. Clock 124 to play in the third quarter. Something we haven't seen from Missouri Western is a big play. He's gonna hand it off and hitting low, nice tackle. Very nice form tackle at the 38 yard line. Good job by Tamarian Wilson. We've called his name a few times. He caused the uh, fumble that Jessup picked up and ran in for the touchdown. Part of Bryant's uh, state championship teams the last couple of years. Third down and call it seven for the Griffins. Vespo looking left, throws left. Bears are all over Grandy. There goes the ball. It's called incomplete. Bears saw that coming. I think Grandy's hurt. He came down strange, uh, may have oh. twisted his ankle on the play. I thought he caught the ball when yeah. he hit, and, and they rolled an ankle or hurt something, yeah. and the ball came out. The Bears were all yelling to get on the ball, uh, but they quickly ruled that it was an incomplete pass. As Grandy, obviously in some pain. But you hate to see this late in the game for Missouri Western. Had Scott go down. This appears to be... Uh, same type of thing. He is in some pain on, okay. the, on the Bears sideline. Last season, 20 catches, 261 yards, and five touchdowns. He was one of those guys that I think they looked to in the red zone. To, well, Matt uh, Williams has had to make this walk a couple of times now. And to some of your big key players yes. that you were depending on in this shortened season. They're going to play four games in four weeks as the Bears are looking to kind of wrap up their schedule. they got two more games after tonight. And, 
Missouri Western's just getting their season started, and he's uh, losing some of his key players in this game. Yeah, nine wins a year ago in his second year on the job, and he is a Missouri Western grad. He's a, a very good man and uh, has done a good job at Missouri Western. Just a tough ask today with the athletes, especially the UCA has at wide receivers, at wide receiver spots. I mean, Winningham and Hudson won their one-on-one -on -one battles. That, that's four touchdowns. And then you have the defensive touchdown from Jessup. And there's Grandy to his feet. He's got to make the long. I don't think you'll see him hopping the last 15 yards. That is a painful yeah, walk all just, the way across the field. Yeah. He's trying to put a little weight on that. Oh, Missouri left foot Western now. fans. Tough being on the other end of a game like this. That's good to see, though. He's able to put a little weight on yeah. it. And hopefully, he just yeah, rolls nice that nice gesture ankle. by uh, Tamari and Wilson to come over and give him a slap on the back. They're all decked out. They're uh, Griffin Yellow right there. Proud fans. Made that. Those folks look like they made that maybe six and a half or seven hour trip. Well, Steve, as a football fan, you're just like me. There was there was a time several months ago that we didn't know if this was going to happen. And yes. those Griffin fans are going through the same thing. They didn't know if they were going to have a season. And now that it's finally here for them, they're excited to be here. They're happy to be here. This was a day of celebration for them. No, it's not going the way they wanted to. Uh, but you can see the way they turned out today to support their team. Uh, just a great day for them to finally have football. In Central Arkansas, the model program for putting together a season in the COVID times. Rasmussen back at the 23-yard line. Bears are not going to rush him. Kick is away. and He's been their star today. Fair catch called and made by Tyler Hudson at the 25-yard line. 40 seconds to play in the third quarter. The Bears have had a game like this all year. You know, it's a low-stress game for Nathan Brown. There's no, there's not going to be the cardiac bears. They don't have to rally from some kind of deficit. There was a great stat that out of their last nine wins, five had been from the comeback fashion in the fourth quarter, and they did that at Missouri State. It, it appeared they had done, had it, done yeah. it again against Eastern Kentucky, yet it was Eastern Kentucky that drove down and won the game in the final seconds. But this is a team has been used to fourth quarter comebacks. Hales hands off, new back into the game across the 35, 38, 40 yard, one yard line. Corbin Humphrey on the carry, sophomore from Mills High School. How about the blocking on this play? Wide open hole, that hole was 10 yards wide. We give Corbin credit, he hit that hole quickly. Good game like this is you can, uh, uh, one of the good things about a game like this is you can get people touches putting up the four Luke Hales. He wants to do some damage in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I told you Luke was getting after his team in the offensive line the last time on the sideline. Maybe it worked. We played three quarters at Conway. Bears 45, Missouri Western 10. We'll be back with the fourth quarter in just a minute. We're back in Conway for the fourth quarter, 45 to 10. Central Arkansas leading Missouri Western. The handoff goes to Humphrey. Seeing his first action of the season, it's a gain of four out to the 45 yard line. Look at a very confident young man who wants to put some points on the board, Luke Hales. Good job from the Bears offensive line that time. The Griffins had a run blitz, firing in their two inside linebackers. They picked up those linebackers and could have been a play for loss, but instead they uh, picked up four yards on first down. Not a bad run. They have four former UCA quarterbacks on this staff, and they pride themselves on moving seamlessly from first to second quarterback. Let's see how Hales does in his time at quarterback. And so, oh, Humphrey lost the football. Oh, and it looks like the Griffins covered it. They say the mesh point. He never had the ball. Never had it. And good for Missouri State. They're still in there fighting. Dominic Chapa with the fumble recovery. And they'll be set up in Bear territory, trailing 45 to 10. 
Luke Hale's coming off the field, and you see the disgust in his face, but he, he stuck it in there well, uh, high and tight, but just never able to get the ball, and you see the disappointment as the back pounds the turf. He knows he would like to have that play back. Vespo, 15 of 23 for 136 yards this afternoon. He's in pistol formation. Burton's going to throw it. Cooper Burton's looking deep. Hurls it deep into double coverage, and it is picked off. Interception for the Bears. It's Christian Kane, a junior from South Haven, Mississippi, and he must be a popular guy because they are chasing him around the field. Great job from the Bears' defense. They weren't fooled by the trick play, although uh, I think if you would look back at the quarterback, he was wide open. There was another player on the other side of the field wide open, but the Bears were targeted in, as was the uh, trick play. The, the guy throwing the ball probably well, threw it to the wrong spot. Well, that is going after the football. He couldn't wait to get to the sideline to celebrate. Watching the play develop up here, I thought they were going to throw it back to That's the quarterback. A happy young man right there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> First and 10 at the 14 yard line. Douglas gets the call and he is stacked up. They are still playing hard over there at Missouri Western. Second down and 10. Bears lead 45 to 10, 13.52 to go. Nathan Brown has been, uh, you know, it's really dialed it back now. Luke Hale's first play, they, they let him throw a quick little out route, a uh, five yard game, but after that it's been all handoffs. Second down and nine. Bears at the 16-yard line. To give to Douglas. He's a shifty runner out across the 24. He has a first down. He lost the football, but recovered it at the 27. He so landed on the down. defender, and so he, yeah. was, he wasn't down. You could hear the coaches in our field mic saying, keep going, keep going, and so he did. He spun off of the defender, and that allowed him to pick up the first down. As a coach, you need games like this to get these kids who practice week in and week out who never get a shot. Yeah, you see him, a la Michael Dyer in the national title game. All right, so they move the chains. Good look at Douglas. Little play fake. Hales is going to lob it up there deep. He's got a man out there. Oh, an effort for a one-handed catch. Couldn't come up with it. Tobias Enlow, the North Little Rock product. Nice soft throw, give him a chance to make a circus catch. He did, he threw that one up there. He's got a big smile on his face right here. I think he had trouble locating the football. That was another one of those one-on-one -on -one matchups, give your receiver a chance to make a play. Under 13 minutes to play. Good look at uh, our quarterback, Luke Hales, for Central Arkansas. 12.50 to play. Bears lead Missouri Western 45 to 10. Hales to throw, throws low, catches made by Enlow. And it's a gain of five, and it'll bring up third down in five. I love their allowing Hales to, to the throw offense. the ball. Yeah, and, yeah there for, for a while, it was just handoff, handoff, handoff and the Griffins were stacking it up. It was going to be hard to get anything inside. Yeah. And look, you got to give Hales a little experience, and that wasn't doing him any good. Allowing him to throw it a little bit is going to help his progress. Third down and call it a long four. Luke Hales is going to throw straight back. He's looking, fires short, catches made right at the first down marker by Enlow. They're going to give him the first down. Credit Enlow to running past the sticks and coming back to it. Yeah. Sometimes these receivers will run to the sticks, and then when they come back to it, they're short of the first down. He ran past the sticks. Hales <laughs> threw it in there. It was a line drive, good, a lot of velocity on the ball, and they're able to pick up the first down. Let's go to our man on the sideline, R.J. Hawk. Guys, you know, one thing about Luke Hales, uh, two years ago when Braylon Smith went down, he was actually the starting quarterback for the entire season, and he developed the name the Gunslinger. Well, last year he came in for one play when Braylon got injured uh, with his ankle, comes in, throws a touchdown pass for 35 yards, and then comes back to the bench and puts his ball cap back on. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I remember watching that game, RJ, and the announcers thought with the backup quarterback in there, they would just hand it off and do the easy thing, right? Nope, not with Luke Hales. They let him throw it, and he throws the touchdown. Caught everyone off guard. You see him communicating with the coaches. 
I mean, this is mop-up time for us. This is important for him. It is. You want to develop him for next year or whenever there's an opportunity for him to play. It may be an injury or it may be that when Braylon moves on. Second down and 11. Oh, Hale's going to keep. And that is not Alma. It's going to be third and long. I mean, the Griffins read that play. I mean, I applaud him because if he had pitched out, the running back was in worse trouble. Yeah, they had, Hale's getting away from the, the melee there. There's little words going on between the Griffins and the Bears. The Griffins had three guys in the backfield. One was on the running back. But two, the problem was two others were on Hale, so there was nowhere to go with that one. Third down and long. Chris Hightower. Little Rock Christian product is in the game. He's another guy that can high point the football. Won a state championship with the Warriors. Made an incredible catch in their state title game. Third down and long. They're showing blitz. Here they come. They're going to hand it off to Douglas. Straight up the middle. Look at him. He's going to go all the way. How about that for the little guy, Marshawn Douglas. Goes all the way for the touchdown. 67 yards. Straight up the middle. Look at that sideline, Steve. Look at him right here. You know, great blocking up front, and it was straight up the gut. You notice with him, there was no looking back. Yeah, a little, little glint there, glance at the, at the back end of the run, but what a nice run. He showed some speed. Watch Jordan Banks, number 60. Yes. Got two blocks on the play. Got to give the offensive lineman a little love. He's a true freshman from Little Rock Central. Jordan Banks seals off the block, opens up the hole. 67-yard touchdown. That's his second touchdown of the season. 52-10 Bears. We'll take a timeout with 10-01 to play. Fifty-two to ten, Bears over Missouri Western. Kick is sails into the end zone, and we'll get to see Missouri Western back on the field. Sixty-seven yard run. Guess who's the leading rusher in the game now? <laughs> he can say he led the team in rushing on homecoming afternoon. One big carry got it done. Yeah, before that, I guess uh, Crosley was the leading. Well, he had sixty-nine yards after the third quarter, but yeah, Doug uh, Douglas now on the game. Uh, Eight carries, 87 wow. yards. <laughs> Did you notice Luke Hales in the background on that shot? The quarterback knew it. As soon as he got past the line of scrimmage, he had both arms in the air, signaling touchdown for the Bears. Vespo out of the pistol formation on first down. Quick toss right. Catch is made. Big hit. Catch is made on the play by Travion James, the Robinson product. Second catch of the game for him. You know that means a little bit more for him yeah. to come back home and have a couple of catches. Second down and three. Vespo has gone the entire way at quarterback. Oh, boy, the Bears are there. Never had a chance. Oh, well, Simpson's having him a game. Mm -hmm. Never had a chance. Little read app option and the just the penetration they blew up the play. Sixth tackle on the game for Colson Simpson. Yeah, Bryson Cobbins got the handoff and had nowhere to go. Third down and caught six. Clock down to 901 to play. Bears in control 52 to 10. It's been a game of big plays for the Central Arkansas Bears. Vespo, here comes the pressure, throws over the middle, has a receiver, he dropped it, dropped it. Ah, oh, you gotta help your quarterback. That was Hezekiah Trotter. He's a freshman from Austin, he's learning. There you cost your quarterback a chance to move the chains, and it was a nice throw by Vespo too. Stood in there in the pocket, looked, yeah. uh, looked across the field, found his receiver, and, and delivered a good yeah, strike. And he's working with his receivers, you know, and that's a, uh, it's only going to pay off later for these guys. I like what I saw. He gave him a little pat on the backside. Yeah. A little bit of an encouragement there. 
Oh, well, we said it's been a game of big plays. Well, Tyler Hudson is back at the 32. Could he? You know he wants to. Rasmussen's kick, beautiful high kick. No return on this one. And Hudson makes the short catch at the 32. 8.41 to play. It's all Bears on homecoming Saturday. We'll be back with much more. The final 8.40 in just a minute. The Bear offense trotting back onto the field. You look at the scoreboard, it's been all Central Arkansas, 52 to 10. That's Luke Hales, the backup quarterback from Greenwood. He's had success in his career at UCA and was an outstanding high school player at Greenwood High School. First and 10 out at the 32. Lights are on here on the Stripes and Conway. Humphrey gets the call. He wants a little of that across the 40 to the 43. And there goes a flag. Well, Douglas has been retired to the sideline after his explosive 67-yard touchdown run. And Humphrey, who fumbled earlier in the game, has a chance for reclamation here. Every running back that gets in now. Number 47, offense. 10-yard penalty. The spot is foul. Replay first down. He's trying to ruin Austin Eldridge's day, but that won't happen because he caught his first touchdown pass as a bear. He didn't like it. He wasn't happy with it. He threw his hands up in the air like, well, what did I do? What did I do? But I was saying every running back now wants to uh, do the same thing that they saw their uh, teammate do. Get that touchdown run, have a happy homecoming game, have something to talk about as a backup, getting some time in on one of these games. 52 to 10. It's been all big plays. There haven't been any three-yard touchdown runs for the Bears. The give to Humphrey. He has a little rain into one of his own linemen. He's quick across the 35 to the 36. Looks like we, they we, found a little something we, up the middle. We caught a break, and the fans did with the weather today. I thought it might get cold as the sun went down, but it's actually a very pleasant evening, which bodes well for those kids making the run on Halloween. I bet they're hitting the streets right about now. Second down and six. Ball out at the 36-yard line. Bears have not experienced a game like this in a while. They've had to schedule up this year, and, uh, you know, it comes at a good time. Uh, Nathan Brown has two young children. Play clock down to five. Luke Hale's got to speed it up here. Play clock at one. Got the handoff up to Humphrey, and he's going to pick up two yards. But Nathan Brown has two young children who are looking forward to Halloween. I said, would it be a happy Halloween if you lost the game? And he said, not really. And then he spun right into, well, yeah. You know? <laughs> well, I noticed one of the coach's wives and their two kids leaving a, a few minutes ago out of the uh, press box. So I think that they were all dressed up and ready to go trick-or-treating. So I think some of the kids are starting to leave the stadium and head out and get some treats. Good look at Nathan Brown. Um, done a great job as head coach. Want to share the title last year. It's a tough conference for the only Arkansas school to compete in. And uh, they just have great tradition here at UCA. Humphrey has a hole, breaks a tackle, still on his feet. Check that. That was Douglas back in the game. Douglas wants to rush for 100 yards today. Well, he's getting close. He was at 88. Yes. Got a nice burst, doesn't he? he both of those backs are quick. You can tell they, I don't know about their top end speed, but they're quick. You watch the Bears. I think they're doing a great job right now of running the clock. They're taking yeah. their time in the huddle. Uh, a few minutes ago, they didn't break the huddle until 10 seconds left. They left. The, they're, they're running the clock now. It's they know this game is well in hand, and uh, they're just running the clock out. Luke Hales doing a nice job running the offense. Gives to Humphrey. Nice tackle. Spun to the turf immediately. Missouri Western. Those Griffins are still playing. Luke's not uh, giving up yet, though. He went over to the uh, head official who was wanting a face mask. He's like, hey, he grabbed his face mask there. We Deion give Burgess the call. on the tackle. Good look at Luke Hales dialed in at the play call. He just tuned in. It was big play after big play by the wide receivers. Tyler Hudson, Lamont Winningham, then Logan Jessup with a fumble return. Marshawn Douglas with a 67-yard run. I mean, it's been explosives here on. Just explosive play after explosive play. Second down and 11. Central Arkansas will go to four and four on the season with two more games to play. Humphrey bounces off a hit. Gonna pick up maybe two yards. Having to work for every yard. 
Here are the UCA touchdowns. 71-yard pass, 56-yard pass, 32-yard pass, 26-yard fumble recovery, 21-yard pass. They had the long touchdown run just a few minutes ago of 67 yards. Their only short touchdown was the four-yard touchdown pass from Braylon Smith to Eldridge, the tight end. Yeah, wild. Under five minutes to go. Bears a third and nine. Let's see if they let Luke Hales throw the ball. Ball's at midfield. No, he's going to hand it off to Humphrey. And down he goes. Griffins say no. Chris Blakeney, 315 pounds, leading the way, along with Isaac Wallace. It'll bring up fourth down for the Bears. That's a tough situation for the running backs. Uh, the Griffins know they're, they're probably running the ball, running the clock, and so they got the safeties down. They got the linebackers shooting in, firing in. Everyone's looking to stop the run. They're not thinking about pass, so it's hard to run the ball right now. And it can be a little frustrating for those backs. They finally get their opportunity, but it's almost like running against a stacked deck. Saren Hughes Ford back at the 34. See if the Griffins try to put any pressure on him. 3.55 to play. Now they're going to back off, set up a return. Line drive kick. Going to be fair caught at the seven-yard line. We'll take a timeout with 3.47 to play, and UCA in control up 52-10. to 10. How about our crew doing an incredible job? What a sight right there. Beautiful. Just a spectacular Halloween afternoon and now early evening. And the Bears of Central Arkansas have had plenty to celebrate. New quarterback in for the Griffins. Seeing his first action is Justin Phillips. He's backed up at his own seven yard line. Phillips is gonna turn and hand off. Bears with great pe penetration. What a nice run. He just got back to the line of scrimmage. Bryson Cobbins had to work hard just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Bears getting great penetration. He'll bring up second down. Clock down to 326 to play in the game. Some valuable experience for their backup quarterback now. You know, it's, we're conditioned to this since we're from Arkansas, but how about people when they see this turf for the first time still? <laughs> Purple's kind of a color that jumps out at you anyway, but then the purple and gray. And the black end zone. Yeah. Second down, hand off to Cobbins again, cuts up field across the 15, and he's going to have close to first down yardage. Nice work by Cobbins. Well, the Griffins blocked that up well. They threw it out there on that right side and picked up the first down. They're moving the chains for them. So that's one of those plays they can go back and watch and something to build on and film study. Joshua Phillips, 5'10", 190-pound junior. I thought Vespo did a nice job. I think uh, going forward, I think he's going to play very well for Missouri Western. Looked very composed back there in his first start. High snap, corralled. He's going to keep it. He's got some speed. Across the 20 to the 23-yard line. Goes out of bounds. It almost looked like the high snap caused, caused him, him to run. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if it was designed for that, but he uh, quickly couldn't decided he couldn't get it to the running back, so he took off. And you, you're right, he showed a burst there. Clock rolling inside, two minutes to play. What a homecoming for Central Arkansas. Team coming off a heartbreaking loss. Second down and four. Phillips seeing his first action of the season for the Griffins. He's going to throw it. Just a short little toss to his big tight end. He's got the first down. He's out there blocking. How about that? Oh, 15's right in the middle. He's going to learn you don't do that. <laughs> well, well, you got to appreciate the effort. He was trying to push his big tight end, Tariq Jackson, up the field. That's what these backup quarterbacks do. They get in and they want they want to keep playing. They want to move the chains, pick up first downs. I saw Luke Hales doing the same thing. Had a defensive end. He handed it off to his left. That defensive end was coming across. Hales stepped a, stepped in, put a shoulder in him, and kept him from chasing down the play. 1-13 to play. 
Phillips, one first down to his credit here in relief of Vespo. He's going to hand it off to Hall. Hall has a burst across the 40, stays in bounds to the 45-yard line. Another first down. Inside a minute to play. He'll you, move the chains one more time. You know they'd love to just put one more score on the board. I don't know if they're that interested in calling timeouts to get there. No. They've had some players injured in this game already. First and 10 at the 45-yard line. 55 seconds to play. Uh oh high snap. They're chasing it down. Scramble for the football, and they recover it. Hall back at the 26-yard line. They've been teetering on that high snap of having one sail, and that one did. Well, we're seeing some backups, and I wonder if it's a backup center because we've seen some low snaps today, but not a high snap like that. Okay. And maybe a different center in there. and uh, Yeah. It caused a... There's no worse feeling for a backup quarterback to see the thing sail over your head. And trying to chase it down, yeah. not knowing who's right behind you. Yeah. They're testing my math skills. It's second and a bunch. The 26 to the other 45. It's 29 yards, I believe. Handoff up the middle. Not much there. Clock down to eight, seven, six, five. This one is over on the stripes in Conway. Central Arkansas wins its homecoming 52 to 10 over Missouri Western. We'll be back to wrap it up in just a minute. Fifty-two to ten, Central Arkansas beats Missouri Western homecoming. Good shot of head coach Nathan Brown visiting on the field with his Central Arkansas Bears. Our Southland Conference key player of the game is Lawan Winningham, and is he not special on contested balls? We told we told you earlier in the game, or before the game started, he had 19 catches this season, nine touchdowns, and he had three catches today and two, two touchdowns. touchdowns. So that ratio actually increased. This guy, when he gets the ball thrown to him, it, chances are it's going for a touchdown. And they were both 50-50 balls. If they go the other way, it changes the game. Steve, how about this? They've played eight games. He has 11 touchdowns this season as a wide receiver. That's that's pretty impressive. Just a big physical receiver and a very complete performance for Central Arkansas. Look at those rushing yards, 235. 539 total yards for UCA. And you know what Nathan Brown's going to be proud of? Two penalties, 15 yards. That's a pretty clean ball game for UCA. Yeah, and I think Missouri Western has something to build on with this performance. Hopefully they're a little healthier by next week and uh, can get something done. But you got to like it for these little fans out here. They've only had two home games here in Conway and uh, a lot to cheer for on that Central Arkansas side. Young and older players celebrating a lot of big plays. Bears win 52-10. to 10. I've had a lot of fun, Wes. Happy Halloween, Steve. Yeah, I want to thank our crew for doing a tremendous job and saying good night from Conway and the Stripes. Bears win 52-10. to 10. <laughs>